Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumble Bears Let's Play. I'm Kristen and I am here with a very nostalgic game from my childhood. This is Dangerous Creatures, Microsoft Dangerous Creatures. I had a lot of fun with this game. You learn all about animals that are very dangerous and it's super cool and very informative. If you enjoy the gameplay, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know if you remember this game. And of course, subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. What we're going to start with first is there's so many different things you can do here. But my favorite thing I always did was the guides. So we're going to start with the guides. And then of course, don't worry, I'll check out the other features of this game. But I think to give you guys the best taste of, of wildlife is to start with one of these wonderful guides. We have this guy. He does a lot of the, you know, walkabouts. And then we have her. And she has different things as well. And then the old, I called her like the old grandma woman. <laughs> so we have Amazon Adventure, Australian Walkabout, North American Trek, African Safari, male and female roles, really tough shots, dumb things people do, which was one of my favorites, coral reef dive. Native American Stories, Tales from Asia, Aboriginal Dreamtime, and African Stories. So let's go on some tours and check out some animals. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Welcome, come, gather round. Our paddlers are just about ready to take us on a bird-watching trip down the river into the Amazon rainforest, where, if we're lucky, we'll see a flock of brilliant parrots on the wing. Oh, click my button when you're ready to get under... In this tropical rainforest, uh, there's a lot of heat and humidity. The plants grow up, down, and sideways, uh, so thick in some places that it's hard to see the wildlife. Oh, you never know what might be lurking behind a giant philodendron leaf. Tropics. Tropical. Reptiles. Amphibians. Mammals. Environment. Now here's a peculiar kind of forest, and just look at what lives in it. Tropical rainforests have many of the world's plant and animal species, but maybe not for long. Or forests are not just trees. They provide food and shelter for, for all kinds of animals. In Africa, Endangered mountain gorillas play in the small forest reserves they call home home. When, when forests disappear, so do the animals that depend on them. Extinction. Habitat Some areas really get a lot of rain. Here's one of them. In cooler climates, getting along can be complicated, but these guys have learned how. Deciduous forests change dramatically with the seasons. Deciduous. Do you know how many plants and animals live in trees? 
especially in a tropical rainforest. I started taking inventory once, but I gave up after I ran out of paper in my notebook. Oh, oh my, look at this. This passion vine caterpillar isn't really dangerous to us, but uh, you wouldn't want to touch those nasty looking spines. Oh, and it's full of cyanide, too. It absorbs the poison from the passion vines it eats. Oh, stand back, give it plenty of room. Swallowing one of these is like taking a cyanide capsule. If you really must taste a caterpillar or a butterfly, eat a different one. But better yet, don't eat one at all. Magic. Butterflies and moths go from eggs to caterpillars to chrysalises to winged glory. Chrysalis. Dis disguise yourself as a flower, like the crab spider and the praying mantis do, and you'll catch yourself a... Predatory. Prey. Scary tricks from the puss moth caterpillar. It has a few surprises up its sleeve. Passionflower leaves, poisonous to most, are a gourmet meal to this caterpillar. Passion vine butterflies come in many different colors and patterns. Species Unlike most butterflies, the passion vine butterfly isn't good to eat. Predator. The passion vine caterpillar isn't the only creature that wears spikes for protection. If, if you're a caterpillar, you need to protect yourself. Some wear sharp spines, and others bristle with irritating hair. Or you might look like a bird dropping. Then no one would want to eat you. The passion vine caterpillar has neighbors in the tropical rainforest. Tiger centipedes and curly-haired tarantulas. Aggressive. And look, they're on the ground. Step back quickly. That's a Brazilian wandering spider, one of the deadliest spiders in the world. Oh, there may be others about. Uh, let's get into the canoes now and, and out onto the river uh, where it's safer. Imagine being able to coordinate eight legs and several sets of eyes. <laughs> oh, some days uh, I can barely walk in a straight line and, and, and focus on, on what's ahead. If you could manage to look like a flower, you too could catch insects, like the crab spider. The spider's web, from a liquid in the spinneret organs, to a tough, silk-like thread, to a work of art. Home furnishings. Cave spiders spin webs near the entrance to trap food and hang egg sacs from the ceiling. Live near the Amazon River rainforest? Watch out for the venomous Brazilian wandering spider. Busy, busy, busy. House and garden spiders clean up pesky insects for us. Cleverly concealed, the underground burrow of the trapdoor spider is a refuge and a trap for prey. Burrow. Saliva. The spider has, has eight le legs and injects venom into its prey, just like another arachnid, the scorpion. Venom. 
Why bother with camouflage when you're a mouthful of spikes like the spiny orb weaver? Spiders are tricky creatures. Some spiders spin intricate webs to trap their prey. Others, like the trapdoor spider, rely on the element of surprise. Keep your hands in the boat, please. Oh, uh, maybe it's not so safe out here. Hmm? Oh, that's not a log floating by. No, one of these crocodilians could snap your fingers right off. Oh, and you thought they only had gators in Florida, hmm? Now, down here, they're called caimans, and they'll eat anything they can grab. Oh, uh, but uh, uh, back to the birds. I, I think I see a scarlet macaw now. Oh, uh, let's uh, just paddle a little closer to the branch uh, overhanging the river. Mammals. Some people think that alligators, not to mention ninja turtles, live in sewers. But don't listen to them. You're much more likely to run into an alligator in a swamp or in the water hazard on a Florida golf course. Just don't get too close to a gator and you'll both be okay. Reptiles all. These creatures have backbones, scaly skin, and blood that isn't always warm. Reptiles. Other creatures have alligator names, but the Chinese alligator is a true relative of our American alligator. Baby crocodilians receive tender care from their moms. Other adults keep an eye on them, too. Crocodilian. Croc or gator, it's hard to tell the difference. In either case, keep your distance. Don't fall for this reptile smile. Tales of Chinese dragons. Were they inspired by dinosaur bones or by the lizards that are still around today? Alligators live in North America and China and their cousins, the caimans, in Central and South America. When an anaconda meets a caiman, each might think the other looks like food. It's jaws against muscle. But only one will be the winner. The other will be dinner. Oh dear, I've got to get new glasses. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, this bird eats scarlet macaws. Yes, plucks them right out of the air. Oh, uh, keep the small children out of sight, folks. Uh, harpy eagles also carry off monkeys. And, and I don't know if they can tell the difference between a two-year-old and a howler monkey. Uh, uh, they seem very similar, uh, even to me. Pray. Pray. The eagle is a raptor, or a bird of prey, as is the osprey. Just look at those wings. The sloth and the spider monkey have to guard against the harpy eagle. It can swoop down at 50 miles per hour. An eagle's incredible long-distance vision zeroes in on even the smallest animals. Owls do most of their hunting at night. Voles. Hawks and eagles are powerful hunters. As well as hunting on land or in the air, many eagles have mastered fishing. From bald eagles in North America to fish eagles in Africa, this sport goes on around the world. Oh, 
Oh, dear. What are those yellow eyes over there? It's a jaguar. Oh, stay calm. Stay calm. It's a big cat, but it's not likely to attack. I don't think. Well, yes, right. They do swim, but we're right out in the middle, safe in the river. It can't get us here. Anyway, jaguars don't attack people. Uh, well, not tourists on vacation, anyway, I I'm sure. Environment. Camouflage. If you see a jaguar, count yourself lucky. Oh, most people will never get a look at this beautiful cat. In tropical rainforests, be sure to look up as well as all around. You may see a jaguar on the branch above you. Jaguars like variety in their meals. Here are a few possible menu items. They climb, they jump, they leap. Jaguars are all-round great hunters. Big, mysterious cats like jaguars have inspired awe in many cultures through the years. A good job of camouflage mimics the surroundings. A motionless jaguar is almost invisible. Jaguars, leopards, ocelots, and cheetahs. Spots and more spots. But all the spots are different. They roam the same Central American neighborhood, but an ocelot will always back away from the bigger jaguar. Jaguars prowl their territories alone, except when males and females come together to mate. These beautiful cats love water and are famous for their fishing techniques. Feline. Let's focus on river life. For example, if you lean over close to the water, you'll notice a school of beautiful red-bellied fish. Notice the round shape and the mouthful of teeth. I say, what impressive teeth. Oh, no! Get your faces out of the water! Those are piranhas! They're generally placid, but they could bite your noses right off if they chose to. Oh, I, I, I knew they were piranhas. Yeah, I just thought everyone should have a, a close look. Piranhas are more likely to attack when water levels are really low and they are concentrated into small areas. So don't go wading in small pools in South America during the dry season, okay? A lone barracuda is actually more of a threat than an entire school of them. Piranha's teeth are designed to slice off just one bite. A barracuda's teeth snag the whole victim. Even with their eyes closed, fish can sense what's going on around them. A rainforest is a beautiful place, but you've got to watch your step. A single par piranha is not much of a threat to a swimming animal. But a hungry school of piranhas each fish armed with razor-sharp teeth can quickly make a victim disappear. On the right, note the beautifully colored leaf floating by. Rather large, nice pattern, and followed by a tail. Oh, yes it is. Oh, that's an anaconda, a rather gigantic type of boa. Oh, these snakes swim. They lounge around on the banks. Oh, they could be anywhere. Eat fish and caimans and birds and uh, small children. Oh, just kidding about the small children, folks. Yeah, but don't let it climb into the canoe just in case.
Boas aren't venomous, but they can bite, and they have sharp teeth. Don't move your hand quickly in front of a boa's head, or it may mistake your hand for prey. And don't ever let a boa give you a hug. Clever Camouflage the emerald tree boa can hide from the harpy eagle and sneak up on a nice opossum dinner. The anaconda, a type of water boa, can grow to be a giant. Similar lifestyles, different continents. The green tree python and the emerald boa. Constrictor. Elastic jaws, hmm. You can see why rats go out of their way to avoid a boa constrictor. Camouflage for the growing emerald boa. Red at first for the low bushes. Emerald green by tree time. Juvenile. These interesting reptiles live on South Pacific islands. Habitat. Reptiles. Hanging upside down, down is no problem for an emerald emerald tree boa. It just wraps its tail around a branch as an anchor. Swallowing a full-grown parrot for supper might be a little harder. There's another type of boa over there. And, well, really, it's, it's swallowing one of our birds. Well, now, how are we supposed to bird watch when snakes are gulping them down at every opportunity, honestly? How can you tell a venomous snake from a harmless one? Oh, well, uh, some people say it's the shape of the head or the type of eyes. But I wouldn't advise you to get face to face with a strange snake. Uh, you might scare the poor thing to death. Different snakes get around in different ways. When it comes to size, these two take the cake. If you had 400 bones in your back, you could bend yourself into a loop, too. Vertebrae. Who says green tree pythons have to start out green? Not everybody smells with their nose. Just try it with your tongue. Snakes have different methods for killing but they all eat the same way, swallowing their prey whole. If you really don't like to fight, it pays to put on a tough act, like this character. The milk snake and the king snake, pretenders both of them, but the coral snake, that's a different matter. Mimic. Mimicking. Mimicry. Many people have nightmares about being bitten by snakes. But snakes aren't really interested in people. They'd rather sink their teeth into something they can eat. My, this is an awfully snaky place. Up there, on the branch of that tree, that's a baby emerald tree boa. Oh, yes, 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 I know. Emerald does mean green, and yes, obviously this snake is red. But that's because it's young yet. As it gets older, its green spots will get bigger and bigger. Until it's not red anymore, you see. 
Boas aren't venomous, but they can bite, and they have sharp teeth. Don't move your hand quickly in front of a boa's head. Clever camouflage. The now there, overhead, is an adult emerald tree boa. Oh, possibly the baby's mother. That red one I just pointed out will look just like this when it's grown. But oh, really, it's one of nature's magic acts. Speaking of magic acts, there's one right here beneath the canoe. Oh, uh, don't dabble your fingers in the water. This is an electric eel. It's a fish that can generate electricity, can give you quite a jolt. Uh, no extension cords or plug-ins needed. Mm -mm, no, it can just zap you from afar. Snakes, piranhas, electric eels. Ooh, this expedition is getting quite out of hand. Uh, let's pull over to the bank and try to spot some nice birds or tropical butterflies. Hmm? You wouldn't stick your finger into an electrical socket, would you? So stay away from an electric eel. These creatures can send 600 volts your way. If the shock doesn't kill you, it'll sure make your hair stand on end. Here's a cat you don't want to cuddle up with. Eels come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Radar and an organ that stuns with a 550 volt blast? The electric eel is shocking. Organ. Baby eels don't need a map to find their way through hundreds of miles of ocean. Larva. Larvae. The electric ray, related to the shark, stuns its prey with 200 volts of electricity. Cartilage. The marks on an electric eel's skin are not pimples, but electric receptors. These fish use electric pulses, not only to stun their prey, but also to communicate with each other. Ah, at last, some of the beauties of nature. Oh, gather round, let's admire this colorful flower here. Oh, egad, it's a frog! Oh, no, 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 no touching. This is a poison arrow frog. It doesn't bite, but it can ooze venom through its skin. Uh, let's just let it mind its own business and uh, we'll mind ours, hmm? Don't even think about touching a brilliantly colored tree frog. It's likely to be highly toxic. Uh, just admire the bright colors from afar. I always use uh, binoculars myself. <laughs> yes, uh, can't be too careful. Why, of course frogs have ears. They just prefer to keep them out of sight. Amphibians. Frogs, frogs in bogs, frogs in ponds, frogs in swamps, but frogs in trees? Another brightly colored amphibian lives in the rainforest of Central America. Who can tell poison arrow frogs or mantellas apart? Even experts have trouble. Species. Frogs, like these two, for example, are very sophisticated creatures underwater. Aquatic. Frogs, like these Frogs that look like ducks, or maybe more like pieces of bark. Poison arrow frogs watch over their babies until they mature, and their own poisonous protection takes over. Poison arrow frogs live, live in the trees of the rainforest. When you're a tiny frog, it's a good defense to be poisonous.
we can learn a lot from animals, like when things might be going really wrong. Tiny, pretty, and deadly. Watch out for the bright yellow frog and the blue-ringed octopus. And now, look what's marching our way. Army ants! Oh, they do have rather awe-inspiring pincers, but uh, just stand out of their way and you'll be quite all right. Oh, oh, some forest people even welcome the invasion of army ants. Uh, the people just uh, clear out of their huts for a few days, uh, taking their pets and groceries with them, of course, and let the ants march through. The army ants devour all the bugs they can find, and when there's no food left, they move on. Then the people come back to a nice clean hut. No more fleas, cockroaches, nor bed bugs to worry about. Don't lay awake at night worrying about army ants. They have pretty short legs and you can easily outrun them. If they march into your house, take a vacation for a few days and take your pets with you. Soldier ants are part of a continuously moving army of hundreds or even thousands of ants. Any animal that doesn't move out of the army's way is quickly reduced to a skeleton by the troops attack. Groups of ants called colonies share work and food. Colony. Ants, bees, and wasps all belong to a group called Hymenoptera. Ants have good reason to fear anteaters, their sharp claws and long, sticky tongues. Thousands of army ants carry their queen in a living nest made of their own bodies, even bridging water. Some insects live in colonies ruled by a queen. Other females are workers and will never lay eggs. Many insects, like wasps and termites, build elaborate nests. Now, what's that snuffling about in the bushes over there? You know, it's probably headhunters or cannibals the way this tour is going. Oh, oh, thank goodness, it's only a taper. Oh, sort of a, a furry, pig-shaped animal with a, a, a handy short trunk for a nose. Yes, uh, one of a jaguar's favorite foods. Well, now that I think of it, a jaguar may be close behind. Um, I, I suggest that we scoot back to the hotel and uh, birdwatch around the swimming pool. I, I'm sure we'll see parrots there. If you want to explore on your own, you can click the buttons below. But uh, remember, uh, you won't be covered by insurance should you be swallowed by an anaconda or uh, diced by piranhas. Now, for safety's sake, you might want to click my button again to get back to the guides screen, where you can take another guided tour. Endangered. When hiking across Africa, look out for warthog burrows in the ground and steer clear. A warthog may be at home and you're not invited in. Warthogs are known for their aggressive dispositions and for their, for their bumpy face. Here we are in Australia, ready to go, as the Aboriginal people would say, on walkabout. Now that means going off into the bush. We'll see a lot of odd creatures here, monotremes and marsupials. Well, uh, they're no more odd than we are, really, except they live only in Australia and on surrounding islands. Uh, got your hats and walking sticks ready? Well, hopefully we won't need more than one first aid kit. Click the button at the right and we'll get started. What is that? Oh, definitely not a monotreme or a marsupial. No, no. Oh, it's one of those show-off frilled lizards. Oh, they spread their neck frills, hiss, and lunge at you. And they can even raise up on their two hind feet and trot after you. Oh, they're quite impressive, actually. But they think much too much of themselves. They're always appearing on television in those nature shows and all that. Pay this one no mind. Just walk on. 
If you don't have many natural defenses, what can you do? Hide inside a hard shell. One method of scaring away predators is to show off false eyes and mouths. So many stripes are confusing. That's what a zebra is betting on. When predators come around, if all else fails, run for your life. A bunch of spines will scare off most predators. It certainly works for these creatures. Venomous. You don't need a lot of defenses if you've got horns like these. For these guys, the rule is double your size, double your safety. Fatal. Fatally. A surprise can be a good defense. This skunk does a handstand and threatens to shower the jaguar with its acrid spray. It's enough to make the big cat back off. Well, if it's not reptiles on the ground, it's reptiles in the trees, for heaven's sake. These are green tree pythons. Well, yes, of course, I can see that they're not green. They're obviously not even the same color. But they are green tree pythons. You see, they're just juveniles. Well, take my word for it. I have a PhD in zoology. Here's an adult, oh, a rather large specimen, I might add. Oh, believe me, those two youngsters will turn green like this with time. Those pits around its mouth help the python to detect heat, and that makes it easier to find warm-blooded prey. Oh, not to worry, uh, we're not its natural prey. I, I was thinking more of a bird or a bat. Constrictor. At last, we're getting to the monotremes. Oh, uh, just like those pythons we were looking at, the little anteater shown here at the bottom lays eggs. That's why we say that the echidna is a monotreme, a primitive type of mammal closely related to the reptiles from which it evolved more than 200 million years ago. But a, a mother echidna doesn't guard a bunch of eggs like a python would. Oh, no, no. She just lays one egg into a special pouch on her abdomen. And after about 10 days, the baby baby hatches. It stays in its mother's pouch until it starts to develop prickly spines, a at which point you, you can't blame mom for insisting that it get out. The Australian mainland, Tasmania, and New Guinea are home to some mighty odd animals. Now that you've seen it from the outside, let's see what's inside. No huge fangs, no scary claws. So what's dangerous about a platypus? A platypus has only one other relative that lays eggs, the echidna. Both have webbed feet and a bill, but the platypus is a mammal, the duck's a bird. The platypus hunts for its meals underwater. Don't pet a platypus, uh, unless you know it's a female. You see, the males have sharp, venomous spikes on their back legs. Well, uh, actually, the, the females probably wouldn't appreciate being handled either. A platypus may look cuddly, but don't plan on making one a pet. Like all wild animals, it's happiest and healthiest in its own environment, an Australian pond or stream. What is that? If other animals wanted to eat you, uh, you'd have to develop some pretty good defenses to survive. <laughs> uh, I've become pretty good at hiding myself. Well, if it's not here, 
at last. Here's the only other type of monotreme on Earth today. Now, when Europeans first saw the dried skin, bill, and feet of a platypus, they thought it was somebody's idea of a joke. And they didn't even know about the platypus's behavior, about how it laid an egg and nursed its young. Oh, speaking of nursing, did you know that the milk of monotremes just oozes out onto their fur in special patches, and the babies lick it off instead of suckling like other mammals do? Oh, rather messy, I'd imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a bit sticky myself in this heat. Yeah, how about a visit to the beach and a quick dip? <clears throat> well, perhaps not. That's a saltwater crocodile, and they have been known to eat people. Well, not often, of course, but I don't want to be one of those front-page statistics in the Australian newspapers. And if any of you were to be eaten, they'd probably stick me back at that desk job again, alphabetizing animals by their scientific names, which nobody can ever seem to agree on for more than a month at a time. And, well, as they say, regression is the better part of valor. Is that right? Well, a anyway, I mean to say, let's retreat, but don't turn your backs on this beast. Behemoth. If you see a lot of logs floating in the water hole, don't dive in. Don't ever underestimate just how fast a croc can move. These guys can lunge. Crocodilians live all over the world. Crocodilian. Because hunting them is now illegal in many places, crocodilians are sometimes raised on ranches. Captivity. Can you believe what crocodiles will eat? It lives in Southeast Asia or Northern Australia. It's huge. It's a saltwater crocodile, and it's dangerous. Waterproof skin, high eyes and noses, powerful tails. Crocodilians are built for the water. Crocs and gators are perfectly suited for their watery life. The gavial, a crocodile relative from southern Asia, makes a scary noise, but its jaws aren't strong enough for fighting. For baby crocodiles, mom's mouth is a place of safety. But the same jaws that gently carry babies can easily crush other animals, like this unfortunate snake. And what is that down there on the ground? Oh no, it's a Sydney funnel web spider. Oh, these are feisty little spiders, and their venom is quite deadly. No, oh, it's a good thing we've got on hiking boots. Uh, back away, slowly, quietly, don't make it mad. The rumor is that these fellows have bad tempers. Although, how you can tell what a spider is thinking, I've no idea. In Australia, uh, don't get too friendly with any spider, mm, or snake, uh, or reptile, uh, or amphibian. <laughs> Australia is home to a lot of amazing animals, and many of them are venomous. Their venom is deadly. Thank goodness there's an antidote. Antidote. Oh, those fangs. But how and when they're used are what's important. Having lots of eyes doesn't mean great eyesight, at least for most spiders. Here's a spider with a clever way to trap its dinner. Burrow. How do you catch a juicy bug? Build a web on the ground. Hide in the middle. And rush out when the vibrations tell you that dinner has arrived. Finally, 
a marsupial. Oh, marsupials give birth to live young, but the babies are very undeveloped, really little more than embryos. These worm-like babies make their way to mom's pouch, where they latch onto a nipple and start nursing. They complete their development in the pouch. Now, why people sometimes call this marsupial a koala bear, I don't know. I suppose it's because it looks like a little toy teddy bear. But it's not even related to bears, so please, just call it a koala. There are some very peculiar creatures in Australia. Yes, and a few odd people as well. And you thought Australian beaches were just pretty vacation spots. Predator. How would you like to get a free ride from your mom for a few months? Marsupial. Now here are two unusual species. You won't find them around unless you travel down under. Order. Here's a guy that is no more. We can try and make sure that doesn't happen to any other creatures. Extinct. The Great Barrier Reef is amazing and quite dangerous for those who don't watch out. Camouflage. Abdominal. A teddy bear? No, a koala, not a bear at all. From koalas to wombats to flying sugar gliders, Australia is filled with the most unusual wild animals. Monotremes. And these marsupials are wallabies, uh, like kangaroos, only is smaller. According to the fossil evidence we've discovered so far, marsupials first evolved during the late Cretaceous period, uh, somewhere around uh, 100 million years ago. They seem to have started out in South America and then roamed up to North America, uh, down to Antarctica, and up to Australia. It wasn't so hard to move between those places then, because all the continents were in different places than they are now. Back then, there were saber-toothed marsupial cats, big marsupial bears, and giant marsupial sloths, as well as kangaroo-like animals and uh, small mousy marsupials that you can still see today. And, and, and before you ask, no, I wasn't around in prehistoric times. Thank you. Oh dear, we would get back to reptiles, wouldn't we? Well, I suppose it's only natural. Australia has its fair share of them. Oh, some people call this spiky creature a moloch, but others say it's a thorny devil, and there's no denying the appropriateness of that name. The thorns not only keep other animals from biting it, but they're arranged in such a way that they gather the dew and funnel the drips of water right into the lizard's mouth. Yeah, I've been uh, actually trying to devise a similar system with a, a, a tin hat and a drain pipe, uh, but, but I'm getting tired of standing around all night uh, collecting dew. Well, you just can't beat Mother Nature. Environment. In this isolated area, some primitive mammals have changed very, very little. Water. That's the challenge in the desert. How to avoid the daytime desert heat? Why, get underground, of course. Burrow. Get along when you can, but when times get really tough, just fly, fly away. This toad has special features that help it cope with the lack of water. Mucus. From, from a hawk's viewpoint, a desert is a good home. 
there's lots of room to fly, and saguaro cacti make fine perches to sit on. You can spot dinner from a long way off. From a rabbit's viewpoint, there aren't many places to hide. Here are more devils, Tasmanian devils. If you put several of these little marsupials into a confined area with a small amount of meat, oh, you'd find out how they got their name. Oh, you never heard such growling and yowling and hissing in your life. Oh, they'll gobble down hair, bones, intestines, almost anything they can cram in between their sharp little teeth. Oh, but they're really quite placid fellows, as long as you don't get between them and their food. Oh, I offered one a dog biscuit once. Did I ever show you the scar on my hand? <laughs> The Tasmanian Devil's vicious temper exists only in cartoons. They really are very shy creatures that snarl and growl only when threatened. Uh, yes, but if someone backed me into a corner, I suppose I'd get pretty feisty, too. Oh, dear. Lots of desert creatures have special skins that prevent moisture from escaping. When I'm in the desert, I wish I did, too. And these mar There are some... Here are more devils. You don't have to be big to be fierce. Here's a sampling of some feisty little carnivores. Tasmania and Australia were once connected. That's why they have so many animals in common. wiped off the face of the earth, the Tasmanian wolf, a relative of the Tasmanian devil. Australia is home to many dangerous animals, but most are no threat to humans. Primitive and unusual animals, like marsupials and monotremes, live in both Australia and New Guinea. When early Australian settlers heard nightly growls and screams, they thought the woods were filled with devils. That's how these scrappy little animals got their names. Here's a marsupial you'll never see in real life. This thylacine, or Tasmanian wolf, used to live on mainland Australia and on the nearby island of Tasmania. It died out in Australia thousands of years ago, maybe because people brought in dogs, now called dingoes, and the dingoes ran wild and took over. But on Tasmania, the thylacines hunted wallabies and other small animals until the Europeans brought in sheep in the 1800s. Now, if you were a thylacine, would you rather chase a scrawny wallaby that could bound away at high speed or a nice, fat, slow sheep? Right. So thylacines decided they liked the sheep, and the ranchers decided they didn't like the thylacines and put a bounty on their heads. So, sad but true, the thylacines were wiped out forever. Just as people have shoved some animals right out of Australia, they've also brought in new ones. Ooh, now here's a pushy latecomer. This giant marine toad, as big as a dinner plate, is known in Australia as the cane toad. It was imported with the idea that it would eat grubs and save the sugarcane crop, but it had other ideas. It ate smaller toads, frogs, a lot of the local wildlife instead. It gulps down anything that will fit into its mouth. No, it makes baby toads like crazy. And if any animal tries to eat it, it puffs up and oozes out venom from glands on its head, killing the poor animal that's trying to swallow it. We've created a natural disaster that's now happily hopping around Australia. It just goes to show you, it never pays to mess with Mother Nature. Oh.
Now you've seen some of Australia's unusual monotremes and marsupials. Oh, not to mention a few impressive reptiles and one obnoxious toad. Now, if you'd like to explore uh, by yourself, click any of the buttons below. Oh, but beware. Australia has a larger percentage of venomous creatures than anywhere else on Earth. It might be safer to join me or uh, one of the other expert guides on another tour. Uh, to do that, click my button again to return to the guide screen. Do not hug, kiss, or lick this toad. Its venom could make you very sick. And by the way, that advice goes for any toad. Toads eat everything, but they taste so bad that few animals eat them. Rodent. Most amphibians eat anything they can catch, even each other. Voracious. Amphibians, like this toad, are especially sensitive to pollution because they absorb gases and liquids through their skin. A toad is pretty slow moving, but what a fast tongue. Amphibians, like frogs and toads, start life in the water and then go through many changes. Embryo. Miniature. Toads try to scare away predators by puffing themselves up. The Chilean four-eyed frog even pops up extra eyes. Frogs, slim and smooth, have long back legs. Toads, bulky and bumpy, have short legs. Tadpoles have to be on the lookout from the minute they're born. A few lucky amphibians have protective parents. So you're small, you can still be intimidating. Here are a few tips for self-defense. Puff up as big as you can, open your mouth wide, and jump right at your attacker. Well done. The cane toad puffs itself up when it feels threatened, and it can also ooze venom from glands in its head. These are two of the many tricks used by animals for In North America, you can find almost every kind of climate and habitat you can imagine, from frozen tundra, to deserts, to swamps, to prairies. So there's a great variety of animal life there, too. Our itinerary starts in the frigid north. Got your parka on? Well, uh, take your hand out of your mitten for a minute and click my button to get started. Don't fall into that icy water. Unlike this polar bear, you could be dead in minutes. Now, one of the reasons polar bears can stay warm here in the Arctic, whether they're loping across the ice or paddling through the water, is because the hairs in their fur are hollow. So they fill up with air and insulate the bear from the cold. Oh, that's also why polar bears sometimes turn green in zoos where their water is stagnant. Green algae grows inside those hollow hairs. Oh, this bear is getting ready to come out of the water. No, oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> Polar bears can run faster than you can, and they've been known to track their prey for days. Oh, oh but unless you're planning on exploring the Arctic alone, uh, uh, you'll, you'll never need to outrun a polar bear. <laughs> that wintry cold takes a little getting used to, even for baby polar bears. Too close to civilization? 
handouts and garbage aren't good for a bear. A polar bear waits for dinner to appear in a seal's air hole. On the lookout for leftovers, the Arctic fox will trail after both wolves and polar bears. Lemmings. Fancy footwork is needed to navigate the ice flows, and the polar bear is up to it. The Arctic, a world of ice, snow, and bone-chilling water. The environment that would kill a person is only a wintry playground for young polar bears. Oh dear, it's another bear. Well, uh, but at least it's occupied. Those pesky little arctic foxes often follow polar bears, just like little kids following big ones. Oh, by the way, polar bears are white all year round. Uh, well, except for those green ones I uh, just mentioned. But arctic foxes turn brown or gray in the summertime. Brrr, I can't feel my toes anymore. Ooh, let's head south to balmy Alaska. Oh, I certainly hope the fish keeps this big fellow occupied. Brown bears, like this grizzly, are the largest predators on land. They now live mostly in Alaska and northern Canada, as well as a few spots in the Rocky Mountains. But when Europeans first crossed North America, these bears also roamed throughout the Great Plains. Uh, personally, I, I find it amazing to think that these fearsome beasts were the inspiration for one of the most popular toys in all the world, the teddy bear. You see, uh, the real bears aren't quite so cuddly. <laughs> Don't stare at a grizzly. That's a challenge in bear language. Now, speak softly and back away. If it attacks and you don't faint of fright right away, uh, uh, play dead and the bear may leave you alone. Black bears and grizzlies live in the same neighborhoods. The black bear, which sometimes looks brown, doesn't have a hump. Vegetarian. Grizzlies can grow from less than a pound to over 1,500 pounds, and in only 10 years or so. Grizzlies love fish, especially salmon. Salmon. Spawn. Face to face with a standing grizzly, back away slowly, or shout and wave your arms. As more and more people take over the land, there are fewer places for bears to live. And who's the biggest bear of all? Grizzlies easily outweigh polar bears and black bears. Cave paintings and fossilized bones tell us that giant bears lived in Europe hundreds of thousands of years ago. Herbivore. Ice Age. Fossil. Fossilized. Fossil. Fossilized. In salmon season, grizzlies meet at the local fishing hole. A few arguments always break out over who gets the best fishing spots but there's usually enough fish for every bear to get its share. Oh dear, now look who's shown up. Wolverines have been known to make even mountain lions and grizzlies give up their kills. They'll eat almost any meat, whether it's freshly killed or it's been dead for days. They tear up carcasses and stash the pieces in a lot of different places so they'll have food later on. 
Sometimes they tear up cabins and tents in search of food, too. Now, if that wolverine wants your sandwich, give it up. Pray. Carrion. You'll probably never see a wolverine. They're very rare. But just because they're small doesn't mean they're a, a, a wimpy. Pound for pound, a wolverine is one of the toughest creatures on the planet. Uh, yes, if one wants your lunch, well, hand it over. The badger, a relative of the wolverine, has a reputation as a bad-tempered animal. But most, like the old world badger, are quite gentle. Rodent. They're not related, but the wolf and the wolverine have much in common, like being hunted almost to extinction in many parts of the world. Wolverines aren't fussy eaters. They don't even care if their food is dead or alive. A wolverine will even fight these powerful predators for a kill. Carcass. The wolverine, the weasel, and the Tasmanian devil. Fierce hunters and remarkably strong, these small creatures scare off many a larger one. Aggressive. Wolverines look and sometimes act like miniature bears. They have glands near their tails that produce a musky smell. That's why some people call them skunk bears. Listen to that. The music of the north. Oh, it may sound frightening, but it's, it's nothing to worry about, really. When a pack howls, they're just saying, We're over here! Now, most other wolves would interpret that as also meaning, This is my territory! Stay out! But scientists have discovered that a few packs of wolves interpret the howls as an invitation to fight. These bands of bullies zero in on the howling bunch and try to beat them up and steal their territory. So, uh, uh, no howling, please. It would be just our luck to attract one of these rogue wolf packs. If a wolf is following you, don't be too concerned. Wolves have never been known to attack humans. But you don't want to encourage one to come too close, either. Wolf pups learn by playing. After a few years, they leave to start their own packs. Hello, or keep your distance, or I'm having fun. The howl of the wolf can be heard a long way off. A dominant male and female lead the wolf pack. Dominant. A meal may last for days. Leaders eat first, and adults return to the den to feed the babies. Regurgitate. People thought wolves killed livestock, so the only ones left are in the northern parts of North America. Livestock. The Tasmanian wolf, extinct now, was really a marsupial. The maned wolf, really a dog, may soon also disappear. For camouflage and warmth in the winter, wear a thick white coat, like the Arctic fox, a cousin of the wolf. <laughs> Lips pulled back back. Teeth bared. It's not a smile. It means back off. Wolves communicate with all kinds of visual signals, as well as with a wide variety of sounds. Mm -hmm. 
Just a short commute, and here we are in the San Juan Islands of Washington State. Uh, uh, you can take off those parkas now. Uh, we're in luck. Oh, look at this pod of killer whales. These marine mammals, which are also called orcas, by the way, use echolocation to find their prey, uh, just like submarines use sonar to keep track of objects around them. Now, uh, some of my diving friends say that orcas can project sound so forcefully that if you're in their path, you can actually feel the sound waves bounce off of you. Their mouths are full of very impressive teeth, but thank goodness, uh, orcas are not interested in echolocating humans for dinner. They're after salmon and seals. And now it's back on the plane and off to the mountains. Uh, really, who designed this tour? Echolocation. Killer whales, orcas, rarely attack people. So unless you spend a lot of time swimming with salmon, penguins, or seals, you're safe. Here's an idea of what squids had to avoid during prehistoric times. Warm-blooded. Food web. What a way for a killer whale to send a message. It's called breaching. Here's what might be served on an orca's seafood platter. Pod. Orcas lurk in the water. They sometimes even lunge onto the land to get their prey. The orca is actually a dolphin. Warm-blooded. An orca stalks its prey not only at sea, but sometimes on the shore. After snagging a seal, an orca may play with it like a cat with a mouse. No closer now, folks. This cat does not appreciate petting. Did you know that mountain lions once roamed nearly everywhere in North America? But today, you'll find them only in more remote areas, uh, like these mountains in Idaho. Once in a while, these animals have somehow gotten into passing trains and hopped off in urban parks. Cougars in town. Ooh, that gives both the city folks and the big cats quite a scare. Oh, now where did I put my coat? Uh, well, never mind. Uh, the next stop is Florida, oh, where I can thaw out my toes. If you see a cougar, now, uh, don't approach it. Uh, remember that you're in its territory, you see, and it may treat you as badly as you would treat an intruder in your own home. Whatever you call it, the bobcat or the wildcat, it hunts at night, and there aren't many left. Nocturnal. It lives in the snow and looks like a bobcat. Meet the lynx before they're all gone. In endangered. Cougars used to roam all over North America. Now they're found only in remote locations. The spots on a cougar cub are camouflage to help protect it while it's growing up. Here are two beautiful relatives of the cougar that prefer a warmer climate. If wild animals held Olympic games, a cougar would enter many of the jumping and sprinting events. This agile cat can easily leap distances many times its own length. When bounding after prey, it can switch directions quickly, even in the snow. Ah, warm weather at last. 
Uh, you might be surprised to find out that there are over 200 species of crab spiders in the meadows of North America. Now, some blend in with their backgrounds almost perfectly. Now, can you see the one in the middle here? Now, these spiders are not dangerous to people, although any spider can bite, believe me, but to bees and other insects, they're deadly. If you go flower picking, check out the blossoms carefully, or you may hand your sweetheart a bunch of crab spiders. If you could manage to look like a flower, you too could catch insects, like the crab spider. The spider's web, from a liquid in the spinneret organs, to a tough, silk-like thread, to a work of art. Oh my, don't touch that fellow. You could get a painful rash from a puss moth caterpillar. They can squirt formic acid when they're upset. Some people call them tree asps, like they were venomous snakes. Well, personally, I, I think that's going a bit overboard. But then everyone has his little phobia. But anyway, if you see one, don't pick it up. Both you and the caterpillar will be happier. Well, really, there seem to be buggy things crawling around all over this place. Well, I suppose that's only natural. Insects outnumber humans hundreds of thousands to one, after all. Well, sometimes the very thought gives me nightmares. Why, if insects ever got organized and decided to fight humans, we'd be helpless. Uh, but fortunately, that would happen only in the movies. They have only teeny tiny brains, after all, and they seem to focus their aggressions only on each other. Still, stay out of the way of these battling stag beetles. They might grab you by mistake, and those pincers hurt. Ooh. Don't pick up a strange beetle. Some have nasty pincers, and some can even squirt acid. Well, it's no wonder they're so defensive. Consider your size compared to theirs. Sure, beetles have wings. They're just covered up. Weevils are tiny, pretty, and they can be destructive. Now here are two that you've surely seen. Aphid. Many insects are easily misunderstood, just like people in a way. If you're not really good at fighting, sometimes you've got to fake it. Have you ever, ever seen creatures that come in as many varieties as beetles? Tadpoles beware. Diving beetles would like to have you for dinner. The color red means don't eat me. Some beetles are built for battle. When male stag beetles meet, they wrestle by grabbing each other with their curved pincers. There's little doubt about who is the loser. Now, if there's anything I can't abide, it's an overly friendly reptile like this one. Oh, sure, they'll smile and sidle right up to you, and the next thing you know, they've got their teeth sunk into your leg. Never trust them, that's what I say. They get this way because some people that live along rivers and canals in Florida think it's fun to feed alligators from their boat docks. But it's never a bright idea to teach wild animals to associate food with people. Imagine finding this fellow scratching at your back door for supper. Crustacean. Some people think that alligators, not to mention ninja turtles, live in sewers. But don't listen to them. You're much more likely to run into an alligator in a swamp or in the water hazard on a Florida golf course. Just don't get too close to a gator and you'll both be okay. Reptiles all, 
these creatures have backbones, scaly skin, and blood that isn't always warm. Other creatures have alligator names, but the Chinese alligator is a true relative of our American alligator. Baby crocodilians receive tender care from their moms. Other adults keep an eye on them too. Croc or gator, it's hard to tell the difference. In either case, keep your distance. Now here's something that you might like to find in your backyard. It's a rather fearsome looking spider, but it's smaller than your fingertip. And it eats mosquitoes and other pesky insects. Spiny orb weavers like this one live all across the southern US, from Florida to California. Oh, first it was cold and damp, now it's hot and damp. I'm starting to feel like the proverbial limp dish rag. Let's zip over to Arizona and dry out uh, before my athlete's foot starts acting up. Ah, warm, dry air at last. What's that? Oh, oh, not to worry. It's just a little Gila monster. Oh, yes, it is venomous, but a Gila monster would rather do almost anything than fight. Oh, matter of fact, if you get bitten by one, the response you'll probably get from local wildlife authorities is, well, just what were you doing to the Gila monster? And if you say, trying to catch it, you may be in for a fine as well as a medical bill, because it's against the law to capture Gila monsters in many places. So just remember, if you grab a Gila monster, you may end up needing both a doctor and a lawyer. Though that thought is certainly enough to make me stay far away from these lizards. Uh, let's just walk on. Most Gila monster bites have occurred when the Gila monster was being abused. These lizards are not known for their sense of humor. Mm -mm. No, so don't tease a Gila. The hot desert sand and a lack of water and hiding places call for special techniques. Reptiles. Rattlesnakes, female jewel wasps, and scorpions make the desert a tough place to live. Paralyze. The sandfish has all the equipment necessary for living in the desert. Hibernate. Hibernation. Streamline. The colors yellow and black often signal that an animal carries vase venom. Besides the Gila monster, the only other venomous lizard is the beaded lizard. Gila monsters chew venom into their victims and render them helpless. Nervous system. Gila monsters aren't exactly quick, so they don't attack fast-moving prey. An egg moves at about the right speed for this lizard. Oh dear, here's a creature I'm all too familiar with. There are scorpions all across the southern United States and certainly down into Mexico. Oh, believe me, it's always more desirable to discover a scorpion by sight rather than touch. If you want to avoid finding out what a scorpion's sting feels like, I advise you not to reach or step into dark, cool places without looking first. Speaking of dark, cool places, let's just take a quick peek into this cave over here. Oh, you never know what treasures you're going to find in the wilderness. If you're camping out in scorpion country, uh, shake your shoes out when you get up in the morning. Uh, I once put my foot into my boot without looking, and I got a nasty sting. Uh, however, at least I survived the experience, yes. Uh, the scorpion did not. The male and female scorpion have a special mating dance. When babies arrive, she carries them on her back. 
All scorpions sting, but only a few have venom that could be deadly. The scorpion carries a unique set of power tools. The sun goes down and out come the scorpions. All insects, spiders, and other scorpions better watch out. On the desert floor, the battle is about to begin. Scorpion and tarantula are in position. In a shoving match, either might win. But the scorpion can also sting. <laughs> well, back, back, back! Oh, 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 my apologies if I've uh, trampled anyone. Well, I've never seen so many rattlesnakes all together like this. Oh, a remarkable sight. Definitely worth a notation in your journals. <laughs> yeah, a, a photograph? Well, I, I really wouldn't advise it. Uh, not unless you've got a zoom lens. <laughs> You'd like a shot of me in front of the snakes? Well, I'm very flattered, but... Um, oh, so sorry. Oh, we're all out of time. I've got a rush now. Well, I, I'm due to lead some more tours. Uh, uh, hopefully some without so many snakes. If you'd like to come along, click my button again to get back to the guide screen. If you really want to explore on your own, click the buttons below. But be careful out there. Ready to go on safari? Oh, no promises now. When you're on safari, you just see what you see. You can't make wild animals magically appear on command. After all, we're visitors in their world. Africa does have an incredible variety of wild animals, though, so I'm sure we'll run across some exciting ones. Click my button when you're ready to go. While most monkeys live in trees, baboons spend most of their time on the ground. Now, looking at this fellow, it's no wonder most scientists believe that people and monkeys had common ancestors that lived millions of years ago. This baboon uh, looks at least as intelligent as most of the people I work with. If a baboon grins at you, it's not amused, it's angry. Back away slowly. If you turn your back on one, you may get a nasty bite in the posterior. <laughs> oh, believe me, I know. In the African savanna, baboons forage for food on the ground, but sleep in trees for safety. In the African savanna, baboon... Savanna. Now why are there... While mo Young monkeys, apes, and humans learn skills through play. Monkey. Ape. The male mandrel, a relative of the baboon and the largest of all monkeys, has a brightly colored face. Scientists believe that humans are related to apes and monkeys. Just compare these skulls and you'll see why. A baby baboon stays close to mom. When grown, females stay with the troop, but many males leave to find a new group. Grooming is a sociable activity for baboons, and it keeps the fur clean. You might not expect to see these faces on the African savanna, but unlike other monkeys, baboons live on the ground. Now, why are there snakes on all my tours? I, I, I don't believe my contract said anything about this. Well, at least this is not a threatening one. If you told this snake to go suck an egg, 
it would be more than happy to accommodate. Now, fortunately, this serpent has no venom, so it isn't considered dangerous. Uh, unless, of course, uh, you're an egg farmer. A venomous snake like the black mamba has few enemies. The secretary bird is one of them. A venomous snake like the black The black mamba is not the only tree climbing snake. The emerald boa lives in South America. Mambas have fixed front fangs like cobras, coral snakes, and sea snakes. If a black mamba challenges you, freeze and stay perfectly still uh, until it's long gone. <laughs> yes, uh, but then unless you're hiking through the bush in Africa, you're not likely to run into this snake. A boom slang has keen eyes. After sighting its prey, this snake will give chase on the ground or in the trees until it catches its meal. Oh no, why me? Oh, these two snakes are very dangerous indeed. Oh, the puff adder sucks in air to make itself look even fatter than it is. And you do well to heed its warning because its next move is a deadly bite. The Gaboon Viper holds two records in the serpent world. It's the largest viper on the continent of Africa, and it has the longest fangs of any snake on Earth. Uh, what's that? Oh, oh, no, I'm sure none of us really want to see the snake's fangs. I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for it. Give them a wide berth. Adders sleep under rocks and in crevices instead of digging holes, so keep your fingers out of rock crevices or you may get a scary surprise. Travel to the African desert and you may meet another adder, if it's not hiding in the sand. Do snakes speak with a forked tongue? No, they smell and taste with it. The name is scary for good reason, but luckily the death adder is not aggressive. Antivenin. These snakes can sense body heat with special pits on their heads. They're related to the European adder, but are deadlier. By keeping its head still and wiggling its worm-like tail, an Australian death adder tricks its prey into coming close enough for it to bite. The snake's powerful venom will paralyze the victim in seconds. Now here's a creature that's happy to see snakes. When a secretary bird spies a snake slithering through the grass, the bird leaps on it and does a rather impressive tap dance on the serpent with its clawed feet. Once the snake has been stomped into a suitably flattened form, the bird rips it apart with its sharp beak and gulps it down. Well, not a pretty picture, at least from the snake's point of view. What a monster! Any secretary bird that tries to stomp this giant rock python is going to end up with sprained feet, or worse, as this snake's dinner. Rock pythons can weigh as much as several grown men, and they're solid muscle. Don't antagonize this one. Uh, we don't want a wrestling match. A big python could hold you down by just laying on top of you. They can weigh several hundred pounds. 
So don't invite a python to a pajama party. party. Pythons and boas see with heat-detecting pits in their head and smell and taste with forked tongues. Mother pythons care for their eggs, but after they hatch, the little ones are on their own. Incubation A snake is almost all backbone and ribs. Primitive Ancestor The big boa and the little Mexican milk snake. Call them both constrictors, snakes that take your breath away. Colorful, yes, but in the branches of a tree, prey may fail to see the green tree python. Gotcha! Longest snake? Probably a reticulated python. The heaviest? Probably the anaconda. What manners! But chewing your food is not important at the boa's dinner table. Pythons don't need to eat very often. A rat or possum can keep one fed for several days. A really big meal will keep a python satisfied for weeks. No visit to the savannah would be complete without a glimpse of a cheetah, the fastest animal on land. Hmm, well, these particular cheetahs don't look too swift, do they? Well, like all cats, cheetahs spend more time lying around sleeping than they do hunting. Oh, this mom looks like she could use a long nap. Six cubs can slow down even the fastest feline. Gestation period. Unless you look like an antelope, you're not in danger from a cheetah. And it's a good thing you couldn't beat a cheetah in a foot race anyway. Savannah. The cheetah has dog-like claws and paws and can't retract its claws as most cats can. In fact, cheetah means dog cat. Retract. Cheetahs are champion runners, but their bodies really aren't made for fighting. Young cheetahs practice their hunting skills while playing with each other. The serval and the caracal live in the African savanna. Cheetahs are fast, but some other animals are faster than you might think. The rush of a cheetah causes panic in a wildebeest herd. In the turmoil, the cat picks out a victim usually the weakest or the slowest. After a few seconds, the chase is over. This time, the hunt is successful. Here are two savannah cats that don't get nearly the publicity that cheetahs do. Well, that's probably because they're smaller, so they're not so easily spotted among the tall grasses, and uh, they do most of their hunting at night. This serval, and especially this caracal, don't look too happy that we woke them up, do they? Well, we better drive on before they're fully alert. Ah, nature's bulldozers. Did you know that elephants help to keep the savanna a wide-open prairie? Elephants strip leaves and bark from acacia trees, sometimes knocking the trees down to get at the uppermost branches. Uh, but they don't just destroy trees, they also plant new ones by distributing the seeds in their dung. 
Without elephants, the savanna would soon become a forest, and the animals that depend on the grasses would be in trouble. Threatened elephants spread out their ears shortly before they charge. Now, that's your signal to uh, back off. You see, when they're really serious, ooh, they fold back their ears and run straight for you. Uh, now, actually, <clears throat> I'd suggest that you retreat if an elephant is even looking intently at you. Species. Elephants take between 10 and 15 years to grow up. When they do, the females stay with the group, but the males leave. Puberty. For centuries, people have captured and trained elephants to do their heavy work. An elephant has relatives, but there's very little family resemblance. Manatee. Aardvark. Paleocene period. The oldest female leads her group of females and babies. The males usually drift from family to family. A charging elephant spreads its ears to make itself seem even larger than it is. Most charges are bluffs, but unless you're another elephant, you'd better not wait around to find out. The elephant's foot is, is something like ours, except that it's standing on big, flat, shock-absorbing toes. Grabbing something? An African elephant uses the lips at the end of its trunk. An Indian elephant rolls its trunk around the object. All elephants have tu tusks, which are really special teeth, but some tusks are much bigger than others. So many elephants were killed for the ivory in their tusks that hunters now have to get special licenses. It's handy to have a hose for a nose. Elephants use their, their trunks to drink, to shower, to touch each other, and to signal when it's time to move on. Now what spooked these warthogs? Well, I didn't really think we were that intimidating. These animals get their names from the big warts on their faces. I, I, I don't see any warts on this side, though. Aha! Look up and you'll see what the warthogs are running from. These leopards look pretty tranquil at the moment, but they have been known to leap out of trees onto animals passing below. Now, I always say, when tramping through the African bush, keep one eye on the ground, uh, remember those snakes, one eye straight ahead, and the other trained on the limbs above. Uh, hmm. Well, that makes three eyes, doesn't it? Well, what I mean to say is, just keep a lookout in all directions. Leopards are mostly active at night, so unless you're out in the bush after dark, you're not likely to meet one. Uh, uh, you might hear one, though, without even realizing it. Uh, their calls sound like someone sawing wood. The leopard, like most big cats, is a loner. It hunts alone and, except for mothers with cubs, lives alone.
high in the trees. That's where leopards hide, look around, sleep, and stash their meals. Leopards move as freely in a tree as they do on the ground. Its beautiful coat of fur has nearly cost this leopard its existence. The snow leopard is on the endangered list. The black panther either is really a leopard, and if you look closely, you can still see its spots. A big spotted cat in Africa? It's a leopard. In South America, it's a jaguar. Rats can't order in. If they're hungry for a nice, juicy antelope, they've got to go out, catch one, and then drag it up a tree so it won't get stolen. And here's one of the reasons why. Some snakes climb trees as well as slither across the ground. This is a black mamba, one of the fastest and most dangerous snakes in Africa. Uh-oh, ooh, is it looking in our direction? Uh, quick, uh, let's get out of here and head down to the river. Uh, it's normally a, a rather peaceful spot. Uh, no serpents dropping out of trees there. There are often predators here, getting a drink or waiting for dinner to stroll by. These two mother lions look as though they've come down to give their cubs a good dunking. Although, I'm sure that's not the case. You see, like all cats, lions wash their fur with their tongues. <laughs> well, imagine having to wash your entire body with your tongue. Why, my feet would never be clean. Not to uh, mention uh, uh, other parts. Well, I'm glad we have washcloths and towels, aren't you? Social. Within a pride, lions are used to fighting and wrestling with each other, even the cubs. So don't tease a lion cub. It may come after you with its claws out. In the African savanna, the lioness is the queen of the hunters. Unlike other cats, lions are social. They live in groups called prides. Cats see in the dark, but why do their eyes glow? In the lion family, mom hunts, but dad's the boss. One zebra a week keeps a lion happy, but the hunting doesn't always go that well. A lioness stalks through the tall grass. African grazing animals are used to the sight, so panic doesn't set in until she charges. Although the females made the kill, the whole pride shares the meal. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's our signal to clear out. Oh, the hippos are coming out of the water for their nightly grazing. And they're not keen on sharing their territory with people. Oh, I've seen those jaws reduce a large gourd to pulp in a single chomp. Oh, I don't even want to think about what they could do to people. Oh, but what's that rumbling noise? Is that dust rising over the hill?
Hippos spend most of their day sleeping or resting in water. Look for ears and nostrils at the surface before paddling into an area. If you see any, keep your distance. Hippos will charge, and they aren't slowpokes. <laughs> Hippos usually come out at night to graze, staying close to the water. Mothers guard their babies ferociously. Look at that mouth, those teeth. Hippos are some of the most dangerous animals in Africa. Hippos spend a lot of time underwater even giving birth to their babies there. You can see a lot of animals at the waterhole, but you'd better keep your distance. Finding enough to eat can be a challenge for these huge herbivores. Hippos in a water hole are like the tip of an iceberg. There may be dozens more hidden beneath the water's surface. Stay in the vehicle or you'll be trampled. Oh, wildebeests are rather single-minded creatures. And when they're migrating, they often plunge through barriers of all kinds, including through roaring rivers, over cliffs, or through a group of tourists on safari. This is only the beginning of the Great Migration, uh, but it's the end of this tour. We've seen hundreds of grazing animals, quite a few of the big predators, and of course those ever-present snakes. If you'd like to take another tour, click my button again to return to the guide screen. Oh, you're also quite welcome to click the buttons below and explore by yourself. Uh, but remember, you're traveling at your own risk. Drought. I'm glad I'm female, and I'm also glad I'm human. Now, in the human world, males and females are finally getting pretty equal treatment. But in the animal world, being male or female can make a big difference in how your life works out. Click my button at the right and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you're a female black widow spider, you've got it made. You've only got to worry about predators that want to eat you. <laughs> and most wild animals have to do that. But if you're male, you've got to watch out for predators, and you've also got to worry about the intentions of that female spider you've been seeing. A lot of black widow males don't get the chance to kiss and tell because the females eat them after they mate. Male scorpions sometimes have the same problem, so if you had to be a scorpion, it would be best to be a female scorpion. Black widows bite only in self-defense, so if you see one, leave it alone. Uh, they like to make their webs across the seats in outdoor toilets. I, I, I suggest you look before you sit. A female black widow is a much better mom than she is a mate. Spiders use silk thread produced within their own bodies to make their webs. You'd bring a gift, too. A female black widow, like some scorpions, may eat the male after mating. A bite from the black widow or the rattlesnake will hurt, but it's not likely to kill you. Some females are more deadly than the males. Larva. Larvae. A female black widow is a good homemaker. She guards her egg sac until the babies hatch. 
and carefully wraps up extra food for future meals. If you're a female lion, it's mostly up to you to bring home the bacon, and the zebra, and the wildebeest, and then the males eat first, the ungrateful beasts, and you get what's left over. Now, if you're a male lion, you can lay around a lot of the time, but it's your job to protect the pride, and sooner or later, you'll have to face something really scary. Within a pride, lions are used to fighting and wrestling with each other, even the cubs. So don't tease a lion cub. It may come after you with its claws out. In the African savanna, the lioness is the queen of the hunters. Unlike other cats, lions are social. They live in groups called prides. Cats see in the dark, but why do their eyes glow? In the lion family, mom hunts, but dad's the boss. One zebra a week keeps a lion happy, but the hunting doesn't always go that well. A lioness stalks through the tall grass. African grazing animals are used to the sight, so panic doesn't set in until she charges. Although, although the females made the kill, the whole pride shares the meal. One of these. Yep, as a male lion, you'll have to fight with other males to keep your territory. So you'd better keep in shape, or you'll soon be sitting on a termite mound all by yourself wondering what went wrong. If you're pretty sociable and you have leadership qualities, you'd be better off a female in the elephant world. It's the females who stay together, and it's a female who leads the herd. If you're a male, you'll be kicked out of the family circle sooner or later, and you'll only be allowed to visit when the females want you to. But you can go off and push down a tree or two to make yourself feel better, or join some other guys who you can pout together. Threatened elephants spread out their ears shortly before they charge. Now, that's your signal to uh, back off. You see, when they're really serious, ooh, they fold back their ears and run straight for you. Uh, now, actually, <clears throat> I'd suggest that you retreat if an elephant is even looking intently at you. Elephants take between 10 and 15 years to grow up. When they do, the females stay with the group, but the males leave. Now, in the world of cape hunting dogs, the situation is reversed. The males stay together in the clan, and most females get pushed out when they grow up. So, it's the homeless females who've got to go off on their own, shredding a zebra or a wildebeest now and then, until they find a clan that will take them in. Cape hunting dogs need to watch out for these other competitors. If you're hiking across the African plains and a bunch of cape hunting dogs runs up to you, uh, well, they're probably lost. Uh, just direct them to the nearest herd of zebras. In a pack of hunting dogs, everyone greets the leader with respect. Hierarchy. When we think of dogs, we don't usually think of these wild animals. Ancestor. Strong jaws, sharp pointed teeth, long legs. This is the skeleton of a canine hunter. Canine. 
The savanna can be a dangerous place if you're one of these animals. Cape hunting dogs live in packs. When everyone works together, the dogs can bring down animals much larger than themselves. If you're a male toad or frog, pretty soon you'll get interested in females and you'll feel like croaking. But although the females are bound to be impressed with your croaking skills, there's a danger to making music out in the wilderness. You might attract someone else's attention. Who can tell poison arrow frogs or mantellas apart? Even experts have trouble. Poison arrow frogs watch over their babies until they mature and their own poisonous protection takes over. We can learn a lot from animals. Like this sly serpent, it doesn't matter what gender the snake is. And the snake doesn't care whether its prey is male or female. One toad tastes pretty much like the next one, and they all taste pretty good to a snake. If you're the couch potato type, you'd better be born a queen in the ant world. After your first flight to find a mate, you wouldn't have to move a muscle. You'd be weighted on hand and foot. Of course, you'd also have to lay thousands of eggs in your lifetime. Both male and female platypuses lead pretty tranquil lives. But if you're going to encounter animals that want to fight or want to eat you, it would be better to be male. Only the males have venomous spurs on their hind legs. One swift kick can leave a small animal paralyzed or a person numb for hours. As a wolf, it won't make much difference whether you are male or female. You'll have to hunt either way, and you'll have to learn the rules of the pack. You won't be allowed to mate or have babies unless you're the male or female leader. If you're born a mouse, <laughs> you're already in trouble. Male or female, millions of predators around the world want to have you for dinner or breakfast, or lunch. But if you're lucky enough to survive until adulthood, you probably want to be male unless you really love kids. As a female mouse, you could have hundreds of babies in your lifetime. All in all, it makes you glad to be a human, doesn't it? We've got a lot more choices. If you'd like to explore the world of animals more on your own, just click the contents button below and have at it. But if you'd like to come along on another tour, click my button again to return to the guide screen. Got the itch to be a wildlife photographer? It's not for wimps. It requires a lot of patience, and sometimes it takes guts to put yourself into the situations you need for great pictures. Come along, and I'll show you some of the tough shots to get. Click my button to get started. Now, here's a really hard picture to take. First of all, snow leopards live only in the high mountains of Asia, so you've got to be willing to scale the Himalayas. To make it even tougher, these cats are rarely seen. It may take you months or even years of tramping around through the snow before you can get a photo like this. Ever wonder why house cats never have any trouble getting around the house at night? Here's the answer. This cat's a sprinter. He's fast, but he can't keep it up for long. Cats are stealthy hunters. They sneak up quietly, and then, gotcha! Some cats are very comfortable in the trees. 
Most people never climb as high in the mountains as this cat does. It may not be climbing for long, though. Humans aren't the only mammals that take good care of their young. How's this for a good mom? If you're prey and you have a group of these crafty hunters around, you'd better take cover. All cats belong to the Felidae family. If humans had the powers of cats, we'd see well in the dark and leap from the sidewalk to the tops of buildings. But we couldn't ride bicycles or dial telephones. Wild cats of all sizes and colors once roamed all over the world but many now face the threat of extinction. If we lost any of these beautiful animals, Earth would be a much poorer place. Like snow leopards, tigers are confined to just a few spots on Earth, and to make it worse, poachers keep picking off the few that are left. Also, any wild animal with babies is fiercely protective, and the tiger is the most powerful cat alive. So you're taking your life in your hands to be this close, even with a zoom lens. Jean. Sometimes you think you're alone with the animals that you see through your camera lens, but surprise, there's another one sneaking up on you from behind. You can't ever forget that you're the intruder in their natural environment. Tigers don't like to attack prey that's looking at them, you see. So if you must go for a hike in tiger country, wear a mask on the back of your head. Well, you may feel silly, but the eyes on the mask might keep a tiger from sneaking up behind you. Tigers love the water. They can drink and cool off and catch their dinner. A tiger's coat blends into tall grass and brush. What better way to sneak up on prey? Unlike lions, tigers prefer to fend for themselves and live alone. Tiger cubs are born completely dependent on their mother, just like baby kittens. No pussycat here. The tiger hunts with incredible speed and strength. T tigers need three things. Cover from, from which to stalk their prey, water, and of course the prey itself. Scientists worry that nobody will be able to take a photo like this ever again. These golden frogs used to get together every year in Costa Rica, but they haven't done it for many years now. As a matter of fact, frogs seem to be disappearing all over the world. This could mean that something is really wrong with our environment, and that's scarier than any creature you'll ever run into. Even if they weren't so hard to find in many places, it's always tough to take pictures of tropical tree frogs because they're, well, way up in the trees in tropical rainforests. So you've got to be willing to climb up there with them. That might not be so bad, but they're not the only critters up there.
Imagine clinging to some skinny branch way up off the ground and running into this. It's a yellow eyelash viper from Central America. It's venomous, and it hunts through the rainforest canopy for tree frogs, too. Would you believe there's even more competition for those tree frogs? You might find something like this up there, too. Some tarantulas spend all their lives in trees eating insects and frogs and lizards and picking defenseless baby birds out of nests. Fortunately, these spiders are not interested in photographers. But enough of trees. There are many other tough places to shoot, too. How does a big, fearsome spider like a tarantula end up as baby food? Spiders eating mice? Lizards? Here's a spider with a really big appetite. Not all, not all spiders hunt the same way. Some use tricks to lure their prey close. Spiders, including tarantulas, have beautifully designed fangs, don't you think? In spite of its reputation, the tarantula, which is any big and hairy spider, isn't really dangerous to humans. Tarantulas are big and hairy, and they may jump at you if you tease them, so they can be plenty scary, but they're really very nice spiders to have around. Tarantulas don't build webs to catch, catch their prey. Instead, they are, they are hunting spiders that pounce on their victims. Some even eat birds. Like underwater. If you're trying for great shark shots, you'd better be in a cage like this, or your dive buddies may recover only your camera. And even when you're in a cage, it's hard to keep your hands from shaking when you're looking down the throat of a great white shark. Caging people for a change. That way, sharks and people can both get a good look at each other. When you eat fish and chips, you may be eating a type of shark. Sharks provide other types of food, too. Clever and careful, the great white shark closes in on prey with a spiraling pattern. Spiral. A chainmail suit protects a diver against a shark's bite, but not from bruises or broken bone. Chainmail. Twenty thousand teeth in one lifetime? The shark is a tooth factory, with rows of replacement teeth at the ready. If you see a shark fin surface near you as you're swimming, don't start thrashing around. Just swim steadily toward the beach, repeating, Jaws was just a movie. Jaws was just a movie. Sharks have lived on Earth since dinosaur times, and they haven't changed much for millions of years. Streamlined, powerful predators, they're perfectly suited for life in the sea. You'll wish you were in a plexiglass cage if you're ever this close to an Australian sea wasp. You won't find many good pictures of live sea wasps because nobody wants to get anywhere near them. Their nearly invisible tentacles can dangle many meters below their bodies, and those tentacles are packed with stinging cells. They are so deadly that your first run-in with an Australian sea wasp could also be your last.
In Australia, some lifeguards wear pantyhose to protect against jellyfish stings. Well, it's better to look silly than to have to call an ambulance, but the safest practice is when sea wasps come floating in, swimmers come running out. Lookalikes? The Australian sea wasp is a single jellyfish, the man o' war more of a community. Polyps. Jellyfish even live in the icy Arctic Ocean, but they're not alone. Invertebrates. Isopods. Parasitic. Diving in Australian waters? Watch out. The sea wasp has hard-to-see tentacles and deadly venom. Meet the anemone, a close relative of jellyfish like the Australian sea wasp. Like jellyfish, anemones sting their prey. Hydroids. How can something so delicate be alive? You can see right through many jellyfish. To us land dwellers, the oceans are alien worlds, full of beautiful and mysterious creatures. Here's another floating thing with long stinging tentacles that nobody wants to get close to. When I and my photographer friends see a Portuguese man of war floating on top of the water, we spend a lot of time arguing about who will approach it underwater and try to snap the photo. You go over there. No, it's your turn. And of course, by the time we've drawn straws, the tide has changed and it's conveniently floated away. A man of war's tentacles can sting long after the creature is dead, so don't touch any part of a man of war that you find on a beach. Slimy mucus protects the sea cucumber and the little fish that live with the man of war. Reef. Predator. It starts off with a single polyp and ends up as a colony of thousands of polyps and a gas-filled sail. Meet the man of war. They're closely related, but the jellyfish is a single creature, the man o' war an entire colony. One sting, a paralyzed victim. The man o' war and relatives like the sea anemone are well armed. Clownfish and sea anemones have an unusual relationship. A man o' war isn't just one creature, but a whole colony. The gas filled balloon keeps the colony afloat, while the stinging tentacles below keep it fed. If you've got the training and the equipment to do really deep water dives, you can attempt photos like this. There are a lot of fearsome looking things down there where the sunlight doesn't reach.
It may be the same planet, but the ocean depths are definitely a different world than the one above water. Glow-in-the-dark fish, things with giant heads, it's extremely weird and very interesting down there. If you live in the dark, it helps to have a built-in flashlight. When you're in the ocean, be careful. Things aren't always what they seem. Just ask this little guy. Aquatic. If you're an uninvited guest in somebody's territory, you'd better have a little protection. Some animals get along well with people, but sometimes it's best to keep your distance, best for you and for the animal. It can't be much fun to see a mouth like this coming at you. Meet Mr. Mouth. Larva. Larvae. With some creatures, be careful when you give a handout. You just might be out of a hand. When there's not too much food around, you've got to have some pretty weird features. These fellas don't just have razor-sharp teeth, they're smart too. When there's not too much food around, Scientists used to think that not much lived in the dark darkness and cold of the ocean depths. But the more we explore, the more we discover that amazing creatures live down there. It's so dark down here that fish can't see each other very well. So some of them make their own light, not to see by, but to attract smaller fish to eat. How'd you like to see these glow-in-the-dark jaws swimming towards you? It's a good thing these dragonfish are really small. But some giants live in the depths too, like this humongous whale shark. It's the biggest fish in the oceans, not to mention the biggest shark. But even though it's huge enough to swallow a dozen people in one gulp, it eats only plankton, although it might accidentally suck down a fish or two. Whale sharks are rarely seen, so if you can stay calm enough to get a great photo like this, it's worth a mint. This is the last stop on my photo tour. If you'd like to try your luck at finding interesting creatures on your own, click the contents button below and be on your way. But there are 11 more guided tours besides this one. So if you want to go on another, click my button again to get back to the guide screen. Plankton. Did you know that when people get hurt by wild animals, it's usually because they're doing something really dumb? Click my button over there to the right, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, what a sweet little thing. I'll just give it these marshmallows, Herman, while you take a picture. Famous last words. While the tourists are sidling up to the bear cub, Mom is probably browsing just on the other side of that big tree. All it takes is one little squeak from baby. Oh yeah, and mom's a whole lot bigger than most people count on, not to mention faster and meaner. After all, just what is that stranger doing with her cub? Keep the marshmallows in the car and you'll stand a better chance of keeping all your body parts in one place. Cameras get a lot of amateur photographers in trouble. The scenario usually goes something like this. Just a little closer, Noreen. Just a little closer. Five more steps and the shot will be perfect. Sure. A buffalo might let you come five steps closer, but who knows? Two more steps might be the limit before it stomps you into a throw rug. Bulls fight to protect their territory. That's part of nature. But people make bulls fight for entertainment. Hunted for food and for sport, these animals barely escaped extinction. Bison. Herbivore. Preservation. Sharp horns and hooves scare predators away from the Cape Buffalo. 
Asian buffaloes love the water. That's why they're called water buffaloes. Endangered. Geld. Some very different animals can live together quite well. The front legs and hooves of the Cape buffalo are very strong. They have to be to carry all that weight. These aren't tame cattle. Cape buffaloes have killed people. When you're on safari, stay in the vehicle. An African, African buffalo pays no, no attention to an oxpecker cleaning its face. But if a human approaches, the buffalo may decide to charge. It's best to keep your distance from a herd. This may be called a monster, but that's because of its looks, not because of its personality. You have to work really hard to get a Gila monster riled up. They'd much rather hide than fight. Most people that have gotten into trouble were doing things like betting they could put their fingers into the lizard's mouth without getting bitten, or carrying a Gila monster inside their jackets. I don't have to tell you that this is really dumb, do I? The colors yellow and black often signal that an animal carries venom. Here's another creature that's often been the victim of human jokes. Rattlesnakes have been shipped across the country in surprise packages, stuffed into mailboxes, and tossed from person to person at parties. Of course they bite. You'd bite too if somebody was manhandling you like that. When a rattlesnake rattles, uh, that means you're too close. Back off. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, heed the snake's warning, and you'll part company uh, without getting bitten. Uh, uh, personally, I wish all snakes were as uh, thoughtful as rattlers. Ever find a whole snake skin? A snake grows out of its skin and leaves it behind. A lizard leaves behind pieces. That buzzing noise is meant as a warning, so if you hear it out on the trail, look out for a rattlesnake. With a mouth that can stretch wide and specialized fangs for pumping venom, the rattlesnake is well equipped. The rattlesnake has long, slender organs for its long, slender body. To each his own, king snakes from Mexico and California find the rattlesnake a tasty meal. Constriction. The rattlesnake has long organ. Just imagine 1,000 rattlesnakes all curled up for a long winter's hibernation. It's hard to tell which snakes are venomous, especially when they look so much alike. Audible. Venomous. Fatal. Fatally. Pit viper. Never underestimate how fast or how far a wild animal can move. If you're out golfing and you see a gator floating in the water hazard, don't stop at the edge to get a closer view. That gator's teeth could be clamped onto your leg before you can shout, Hey, Caddy, how about bringing that cart over here? Now, people sometimes have nightmares about vampire bats swooping out of the darkness and biting them in the neck. But let's get real. You have to go to Central America, peel a vampire bat off of a cave roof somewhere, gently, they're teeny little things, and press it onto your neck. If you do all that, you deserve to get bitten.
Vampire bats can carry disease, so don't let one suck on your neck. But unless you're sacked out among a herd of cattle in Central America, you don't need to worry. The wing of the bat is a marvelous creation. The bat's clawed feet are good for crawling and for hanging upside down while sleeping. They sleep in cool caves and empty buildings. To stay warm, they huddle close. They sleep in cool... Bats use their wings not only to fly, but to catch their dinner. Rudder. Break. Bats use their... When night falls, bats come out of their hiding places to hunt for dinner. Vampire bats look for large, warm-blooded animals. Just a tiny bite from this tiny bat, and dinner's ready. Blind as a bat? Not so this bat. No need for a road map. A bat reads echoes to learn what's nearby. Constrictors like pythons or boas often appear in pet stores. Now, these snakes are not venomous, so some people think they don't bite. Wrong. How do you think they grab onto a mouse or a bird to eat it? Move too quickly in front of them and you may find out just how long and sharp their teeth are. Also, constrictors feel nice to the touch, but sometimes these snakes want to get too cuddly. If you give one a hug, it may hug you back and it may not let go. A big python could hold you down by just laying on top of you. They can weigh several hundred pounds. So don't invite a python to a pajama party. Darling pups, huh? Sometimes you might see wild animal babies like these fuzzy baby wolves for sale. But not only is it illegal in most places to keep a wild animal, but they really don't make good pets either. Oh sure, they're real cute and fun to play with when they're tiny, but they do grow up. Whoa, bad puppies. When they're big, they act like the wild animals they're meant to be. An adult wolf, even one that you've raised from a pup, may attack livestock, other pets, or even people. The same goes for any predator, like an ocelot or a fox, for example. They're not being mean, they're just doing what nature tells them to do. And obedience training is probably not going to help. A little salamander doesn't look dangerous, so you might be tempted to pick one up. Don't. Many of them have powerful venom that they can squeeze out of special glands when they're scared. Get it on your hands, then wipe your mouth or your eye, and you could end up in the hospital. They don't want to be grabbed anyway, so just leave them alone. Don't squeeze a salamander, or it may squirt venom at you. Uh, actually, don't squeeze any animal. You wouldn't let them squeeze you, would you? Of course you wouldn't. The California newt, the tiger salamander, and the mandarin salamander? Danger ahead. Whether born live or hatched from eggs, baby salamanders look nothing like their parents. See those lumps behind the salamander's eyes? They ooze venom. What kind of feet does a salamander have? 
It depends on how it lives. Newts come in an assortment of colors and patterns. In a salamander beauty pageant, it would be hard to choose a winner. Wouldn't it be nice if people came in such bright colors and some interesting dresses? Now here's a gentle creature that a lot of divers get into trouble with, even if they don't get bitten by it. Soft and squishy, pretty small animal, right? An octopus may not have much muscle power, but it has suction on its side. It can latch onto a rock with a few arms and hold onto your foot with a couple more. And there you are, stuck onto an octopus who's stuck to the ocean floor. The octopus can breathe underwater. Too bad you can't. So I guess the basic message is, you can have a lot of fun with wild animals, but you've got to respect them too. The fun's in watching them and taking pictures of them, not in teasing them. And it's certainly no fun to fight with them. If you want to explore the animals in this product by yourself, click the contents button below and take off. But there are lots more tours to choose from. Click my button again to get back to the guide screen where you can choose another. Got your scuba gear ready to go? Tanks filled up with air and regulators checked out? Let's go on a tour of a coral reef. Click my button and we'll begin. A coral reef is a fantastic world, isn't it? Everything is beautiful down here. But don't get starry-eyed in this wonderland. You've got to watch out. There's danger where you least expect it. Even the coral itself can be pretty treacherous. Diving on a coral reef is kind of like visiting another planet. There are animals that look like plants, even the rocks are alive, and we're the aliens there. Fish always need to be on the lookout for these fierce hunters. Sometimes, things that look really tasty are anything but, like this creature. Many people don't realize that a coral reef is actually a collection of living creatures. Secrete. Plankton. It's hard to believe that a coral reef could have enemies that threaten to destroy it. Now here are some surprisingly nimble creatures. Have you ever, ever seen so many colors? If you're ever wading around a reef, keep an eye out for this guy. Coral reefs are colorful, mysterious, and fragile worlds. We need to protect them now so that people and sea creatures can enjoy these special places in the future. Erosion. If you think that coral's a type of rock, you're only partially right. That hard substance that land lovers call coral is the hard covering created by millions of tiny corals, which are animals, although they look a little like plants. Now these orange ones are fire corals, and if you brush up against them with your bare skin, you'll find out how they got that name. They sting like red-hot coals. Did you know that starfish have a mouth in the center of their bodies and eyes on the ends of each arm? 
they can shake hands and poke each other in the eye at the same time. And you thought creatures like that existed only in science fiction. The ocean is definitely like an alien world right here on Earth. Speaking of aliens, here's one now. Pufferfish can blow themselves up like balloons. They usually do it by sucking in water, but a few have been known to go to the surface and suck in air. Now that's not real smart, because it makes them float on the surface of the water, and then sometimes birds come down and peck at them. But then, most fish aren't known for their intelligence, and pufferfish don't have to be smart, because they're poisonous to eat. Don't try to make a porcupine fish into a pet. It won't, thank you. And don't try to eat a puffer fish either. That meal could be your last. A plate full of puffer fish might be a delicacy, or it might just be your last meal. Suck in water and make yourself hard to eat, but swimming can be difficult. Looks aren't everything. These bony fish, like the porcupine fish, can take care of themselves. The porcupine fish isn't the only prickly creature. Ever since the dinosaurs, spikes have protected animals. Spikes are worn by many underwater creatures, even starfish. Most of the time, a porcupine fish is a sleek swimmer. But when it feels threatened, it puffs up into a spiky ball. When the threat disappears, the fish deflates so it can swim again. How'd you like to spend your life in a box? That's what these odd little fish do. They have hard skeleton boxes right under their skin, instead of ribs and a backbone like some other fish do. It's pretty hard to swim fast if you're box-shaped, so these guys spend a lot of time close to the reef where they can hide. And wherever there's a hiding spot, like a hole or a crevice on a reef, there's a good chance that something will be waiting inside. A moray eel may come rushing out at you like this. That can scare the wetsuit right off you, but morays usually don't bite, so consider yourself lucky. Now, if you're unlucky, something else might come out. If you're ever unlucky enough to have a moray bite you, experts say you should grin and bear the pain. The eel will eventually let go and swim away. <laughs> then you can do the same. Deep in the dark water, these weird eels use glowing lures and cavernous mouths to catch their prey. Moray eels come in colors and patterns. The ribbon eel, famed for its beauty, is a favorite of aquarium owners. The eel only bites if it's threatened or mistakes some part of a person for its usual food. If you're diving in eel country, don't stick your hand down that hole. A waiting eel may think it's a fish. Eels generally dine on small fish, mollusks, and crustaceans. In some places, the eel itself may be on the menu. Mollusk. Crustacean. Morays always have their mouths open, not for biting, but for breathing. 
Although one might challenge a diver now and then, it's usually the people who are pestering the eels, not the other way around. And if it looks anything like this, you'd better back paddle fast. Sea snakes are related to cobras, and some types have venom powerful enough to kill a person. Yikes! I don't ever want to be this close to a sea snake again. If you see anything that looks like a snake underwater, water, swim in the opposite direction. If you are bitten by a sea snake, you may not be able to get to a hospital in time to save your life. This is a serious snake. Sea snakes often hide in holes. Keep that in mind if you're out diving in coral reefs. They both have skinny, flexible bodies, but the eel is not related to the sea snake. Small fish and eels beware. The venom of the sea snake works fast. They're snakes, not fish, and sea snakes come up to breathe. Where? In the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Nice relatives. The sea snake counts the cobra, the coral snake, the mamba, and the crate as family. Sea snakes come in just about every color and pattern imaginable. Like the sea snake, which has a flattened tail for swimming underwater, other animals have handy tails too. Although they've adapted to life at sea, these serpents are real snakes, and deadly ones, too. Like most wild animals, they're not friendly. They prefer to swim alone. You probably recognize a snake when you see one, whether it's on land or swimming in the ocean. But you'd be surprised what's venomous down here. For example, those little cone shells you see in the lower left corner are home to some pretty nasty critters. If you pick one up, the mollusk inside can stab you with a venomous barb like a harpoon. Now, as for this giant blue clam, people tell tales about it, but it isn't really dangerous, unless it closes its shell on your foot and holds you down until you run out of air. Keep your foot out of its face and you'll be okay. A blue ring is only about the size of my hand. If you were that tiny, you'd bite any giant that grabbed you, too. So look at a blue ringed octopus, but don't touch it. The female octopus keeps a close watch over its eggs. But when the babies hatch, they're on their own. The amazing octopus can hide in a narrow crack or crevice and jet around by shooting water through its body. Blue spots or stripes really show up in the water and may be a warning. This creature is venomous. A cloud of ink, a change of colors, and the octopus is hidden from a hungry eel or shark. Camouflage. Like the octopus, these creatures are mollusks. Mollusks. Octopi arms are good for many things. Swimming, walking on rocks, prying open prey, and parachuting. Imagine have having eight arms to swim with. You could spread out and float like a parachute. Crawl across the bottom and grab a crab with arms to spare.
Did you know that every octopus has a sharp beak at the center of those eight arms? Believe me, you don't want to find out, especially with this one. This tiny blue-ringed octopus is armed with enough venom to send you to your grave. Let's swim on. Here's a fish that's a real show-off. It parades around like it's saying, look at me, I'm the best-looking fish here, aren't I? But a lionfish has got good reason to be vain. Not only is it beautiful, but those spines are sharp and venomous, too. So everything down here looks at lionfish, but nothing touches them. Don't walk barefoot in tropical seas where you can't clearly see the bottom. You may kick a lionfish or step on something even worse. It may be gorgeous, but it scares off predators with a sharp dorsal spine and a nasty taste and smell. Dorsal. The stonefish may look like a lump of coral, but it's the most dangerous kind of scorpion fish. Lethal. Lethally. The lionfish isn't alone when it comes to sharp, nasty surprises. Meet the John Dory and the surgeonfish. Be careful of hidden spines in the ocean floor. The lionfish hides a venomous spine in each delicate ray. It's beautiful and it can be deadly. Lots of names in the branches of this family. A lionfish can be a zebrafish, can be a scorpionfish. Genus. Lionfish are called many different things, including firefish, zebrafish, and devilfish. Some people call it a turkey fish because of the way it spreads its fins. If you decide to stand up on the ocean floor, you'd better take a good look first. If you put your foot on one of these, it could be the last step you'll ever take. Stonefish are deadly, and they like to bury themselves in the sand so they blend in with the lumps of rock and coral. This guy looks like he could cut you in half. But don't worry, sawfish use their chainsaw snouts to impale fish, not people. Can you imagine how frustrating it would be to get a fish stuck on one of those nose spikes? It would be kind of like having a hamburger glued to the side of your face. Don't walk on ocean bottoms that you can't see. Stingrays like to bury themselves in the sand. And don't touch a stingray washed up on the beach. It may still be alive and dangerous. To humans, the color red means danger. In the ocean, it's the color blue. Unlucky rays can drown in fishermen's nets and end up as food for scavengers. Scavenge. Scavenge. The torpedo ray is a stunner that can kill its prey without ever touching it. Pectoral fins. Only a third of all rays, the stingrays, are a threat, and then only if they're grabbed or stepped on. The sawfish, a cousin of the rays, has an unusual weapon for rooting out prey, its nose. Underwater spaceship? No, a manta ray. Although it's not a stingray, the thornback ray has features typical of most rays, and you don't want to step on it. Often compared to birds or ballet dancers, rays are some of the most graceful animals in the sea. The barbed tail of a stingray is a painful shock to anyone who surprises this animal on the ocean floor.
Whoa, it's a runaway rug. <laughs> Actually, this floating bundle of rags is called a Wobegong shark, and it always wears camouflage like this so it can lay in wait for its prey on the bottom. Pretty sneaky, huh? There's no proven rule for judging when a hammerhead might attack. Until we know more about these odd-looking creatures, don't go swimming with them. The angel shark looks like a ray, but it's a shark. How can you tell if a fish is really a shark? Schools. Small sharks, like the horn shark, use camouflage to hide from predators, which can include big sharks. It may be big, but the whale shark is a gentle giant. It eats only plankton. If you think a hammerhead looks strange, check out the headgear on these fish. Hammerheads wave their oddly sheds from side, side to side as they swim. Perhaps the motion helps them zero in on the scent or vibrations of nearby fish and rays. One little Wobegong shark is okay with me, but a bunch of hammerheads is definitely cause for concern. Let's head back to the boat. Swim nice and steady now. Don't flop around like a wounded fish. When a whole group of sharks gets together, it's time for people to get out of the water. Mobs can't ever be trusted. Oh my gosh, I've seen this monster before in my nightmares. If divers say they aren't afraid of great white sharks, they're either crazy or they're lying. These giants eat a lot of marine mammals, and a diver in a wetsuit and flippers can look a lot like a sea lion. Let's get out now before he circles back. If you want to go off in search of your own adventures, click the contents button below, but be careful. There are a lot of dangerous creatures out there. If you'd rather travel with an expert guide, click my button again to go back to the guide screen, and then choose another tour. When Christopher Columbus arrived in the New World, he found people there, people whom he mistakenly named Indians because he believed he had reached India. People have lived in North America for thousands of years. There are many tribes with many different cultures. I will now share with you some of the stories that the descendants of these first Americans tell. Click the button to begin. Some people say that in the beginning the earth was nothing but water. Then an animal from the world above was sent to dive down to pull up a bit of mud from underwater so that the land could be made from it. Many animals tried and failed. The Cherokee say it was a water beetle who finally succeeded. The crows say it was a muskrat. Many other people believe that it was a turtle. And some say that the earth rides on the back of a turtle today. Is a tortoise the same as a turtle? Is a turtle the same as a terrapin? Here's, here's the turtle. But what's the mystery underneath that shell? Two hundred million years and turtles haven't changed much, except we don't have any as big as the huge Archelon. The big-headed turtle can easily live up to its name. It can't pull its head inside its shell. Shells? Many sizes, many shapes. It all depends on where you live if you're a turtle. It's hard to hide inside your shell when your head's too big to fit, so it might be wiser to attack.
The beach can be a dangerous place for sea turtles. The female comes out of the water and, and digs a nest in which to lay her eggs. After hatching, the babies run for their lives to the water's edge. Don't walk barefoot in muddy ponds. Oh no, a, a snapper might mistake one of your toes for a fish. Oh, it's not really a good idea to wade anywhere you can't see the bottom. Uh, who knows what might be down there? At first the mud of the New World was soft, so the buzzards flew down to see if the earth was dry enough to live on. And wherever his wings flapped downward, valleys formed. And when he swooped upward, mountains formed. In this way, say the Cherokee, the land was given shape. Scavenge. Scavenger. If you find yourself constantly surrounded by vultures, you ought to consider taking up an exercise program. You're obviously moving so slowly that they think you're dead. Small planes? No, giant birds. The Andean condor and the California condor are the biggest vultures in the world. They may not be pretty, but vultures are pretty impressive. You don't miss having feathers on your head if you have to stick it in a carcass to eat, like many vultures do. Although vultures prefer food that is already dead, many will also dine on rodents and baby birds. Rodent Carrion. Did you know that a few animals use tools, just as people do? <coughs> Gliding on a rising column of warm air, soaring far above the earth, oh, for the life of a vulture. From a high perch or from a high glide, vultures keep a sharp eye out for food. Once a meal has been spotted, it's a race to see who can get there first and who can eat the fastest. The animals were told to keep watch over the newly created world for seven days and nights, but only the owl and cougar were able to stay awake. So it is that these animals were given the gift of sight in the dark. You may see the glint of their eyes in the moonlight, hear the cougar scream, or hear the owl screech, which some believe predicts death. If you look around to see what watches in the dark, you may look up, up past the branches of the trees until you see the stars we call the Big Dipper. These are in the Great Bear constellation. Many people say that these stars once were bears who were pursued by hunters into the sky. In my travels, I've learned that there are living things that have adapted to every environment on Earth. The natural world is a place that never ceases to amaze me. First a blur of white feathers, then sharp talons descend on the prey. A snowy owl is a fearsome hunter. Most life in Antarctica depends on food from the seas. When you live in extreme conditions, you'd better learn how to adapt. Ask these creatures for advice. In the far north, both predators and prey live difficult lives. 
This place is difficult to live in, and mighty dangerous too. When it's cold, it's a good idea to have some insulation. This fellow's dressed for weather. Sometimes you've only got one choice, adapt or go somewhere else. Which anim animals live in the Arctic? Strange seals. Walruses. Beluga whales. And caribou. Just to name a few. The bear is an animal of great power, and he can be a good friend and teacher or a fierce enemy. The Inuit are descendants of the very last people to cross from Asia into Alaska before the land bridge between the continents disappeared under the Bering Sea. They say that humans and bears distrust each other because long ago a hunter's wife turned into a bear and killed her unfaithful husband. The Pomo of Northern California have a story about a girl who married a rattlesnake. She lived with the rattlesnake and bore him four sons, and she told him that they must never bite their human relatives. Like all children, some listened and some did not. According to the Okanagan, a Northwest people, one day rattlesnake got new powerful fangs that could kill. But rattlesnake promised that he would not bite anyone who treated him with respect and that he would never bite anyone without a warning shake of his rattle. Rattlesnake gave his old fangs to his brother Wasp and Bee. The venom in Rattlesnake's old fangs, now possessed by Bee and Wasp, will only cause pain. Many other stories from North America say that wasps and bees are relatives of poisonous snakes. Of course, you know that wasps and bees don't have fangs, but they do have stingers and venom. Mm -hmm. And so, like the rattlesnake, they are creatures who must be treated with respect. To avoid attracting killer bees, or, uh, or any bees for that matter, uh, don't wear perfume, scented lotions, or uh, sweet-smelling sunscreens. To a bee, you see, these smell like food. Pollinate, pollinate. A bee's work is never done. Lucky that wasps, butterflies, and even bats help out. Pollen. Fertilize. Pollinate. Hybrid. 3,000 years ago, the Egyptians domesticated bees. Domestic. It's called the killer bee because it's more likely to sting than a regular honeybee, not because its venom is stronger. The bee evolved from the wasp a hundred million years ago when it gave up hunting. Today, bees live on pollen and nectar. Look at the ways flowers attract bees and other animals. Ultraviolet. Bees have a lot of enemies all over the world. Forage, foraging. A bee sting is a painful experience, both for the victim and for the bee, which dies afterward. Bees usually sting to protect their colony, so bees are most likely to attack when you're too close to their nest. Many Native American stories explain how biting or stinging insects came to be, especially mosquitoes.
If you live where there are lots of these creatures, you know how annoying they can be. Some people from the southeast and northwest coast say that bothersome winged creatures rose from the ashes of a giant cannibal when his body was burned. A story from the northeast says that mosquitoes are the children of a witch who hated humans. Mosquitoes, including their larvae, are food for other insects and for frogs, toads, lizards, birds, and bats. Food web. From the nymph stage to adulthood, mosquitoes have good reason to dread dragonflies. Disease and infection. Besides the mosquito, blame the flesh fly and the cockroach, but remember, they also dispose of waste. Maggot. Many pesticides wipe out all insects, including these beneficial ones. The Anopheles mosquito can carry dangerous protozoa from person to person. A single locust or a single termite doesn't look like much trouble, but in the thousands, watch out. Mosquitoes go through their larval and pupal stages in water, then finally get their adult wings. Only the female males bite. They, they need blood to develop their eggs. Want to keep down the mosquito population uh, around your house? Well, uh, don't leave water standing in containers. You see, e even an old tin can become a breeding ground. Oh, yes, and, and put up a house for insect-eating birds or, or bats. From the nymph stage to not all insects are pests, though. Some are creatures of great beauty. The Papago of the Southwest say that one day, the Creator was watching a group of children playing, and he wanted to make something special for them. So he took all the colors of a summer day, and he created butterflies. When climbing trees, I've often wished for a tail. Oh, would have saved me from a few quick trips to the ground, I, I can tell you. Oh, yes. Some animals have very peculiar and effective weapons. Now, here's a use for a tail that's probably never occurred to you. Heads or tails? Well, for this fellow, a tail's worth two heads any time. When caught by a predator, some animals simply fall apart and run away. Some creatures, like these, have a very interesting way of getting around. Hiding yourself away is easy, if you're all tail. The element of surprise is essential for some creatures, like this one. If you're a runner, you can use a long tail to help keep your balance when you change direction. If you're a tree dweller, you can use a tail for a safety belt to hang onto a branch while your paws are busy. According to the Brulee Sioux, it was another tiny creature 
the spider, who predicted the coming of Europeans and the end of the way of light that Native Americans had followed for thousands of years. At that time, millions of buffalo covered the plains of North America. The spider said, when these new people come, the buffalo will go away. And indeed, by 1895, only a thousand remained alive. The Kiowas say that the others walked into the face of a mountain, which opened to reveal a world of beauty where the buffalo could dwell forever. A tale from the White River Sioux says that an old woman sits in a hidden cave, sewing porcupine quills onto a buffalo robe in the old way of the people, and her dog watches her. Whenever the old woman's attention wanders, the dog pulls the quills from the robe. When that old woman finishes the robe, the legend says, the world will end. Many people say that the world has been destroyed and recreated before and may yet be again. This is the end of my Native American stories. To wander on your own, click the contents button below. If you wish to go on another guided journey, click my button to return to the guide screen and then choose another path. Perhaps you've heard Aesop's fable about how the slow and steady tortoise won a race against the quick but flighty hare. Or maybe someone told you about the man who pulled a thorn from a lion's paw and won his eternal friendship. These tales, and many others besides, came from Asia. They've been translated into so many languages and have so many versions that it's almost impossible to say who told the story first. Click the button to hear a few Asian tales. In India, a story is told of a lonely gardener and a bear who decided to become as brothers to one another on the condition that the bear never hug the gardener because, you know, a bear is much stronger than a man. And all went well until one day a fly landed upon the sleeping gardener's nose. The bear tried to shoo the fly away, but the fly kept returning to land on the bear's friend. Finally, the bear lost his temper and smashed the fly with a rock, killing the fly, but also the gardener. Here is another story from India. Two buffalo labored on a farm. Nearby in a pen, a pig laid about at its ease, doing nothing but getting fat. Complained the small buffalo, we work all the time and the pig does nothing, advised the large buffalo. Wait and see. One day the fattened pig was slaughtered, said the small buffalo. I see that it is better to work hard and live a long life than to have an easy but short life. Geld. According to an Indonesian tale, one day a boar woke up and told his friend the antelope, I must eat you, for I have dreamed this, and it must be so said the antelope, let us ask the king for a judgment. The king agreed that the boar must eat the antelope for the sake of the dream. A clever ape, overhearing this conversation, leapt down from a nearby tree and announced, Sire, I will marry your daughter. Impossible, cried the king. Possible, returned the ape, for I dreamed it, and it therefore must be so. The king refused the ape and reversed his decision on the boar and the antelope. When hiking across Africa, look out for warthog burrows in the ground and steer clear. A warthog may be at home and you're not invited in. Wild pigs like the warthog, the wild boar, and the African bush pig have been hunted for centuries. Teeth come in all sizes and shapes, and some never stop growing. Wild boars and the pigs you find on a farm are relatives. Descendant. Know what a peccary is? What it isn't is a pig. Grub. 
The warthog has tusks, but this Asian wild pig, the babarusa, has teeth that grow right through its snout. In Africa, the warthog is always on the watch for big predators, like lions and leopards. It looks like a pig, but this endangered animal is actually related to the horse. Warthogs use their impressive tusks to dig up roots or to excavate burrows. It takes a lot of rooting around to satisfy a large family like this one. Burrow. From Nepal comes another tale of an animal who tried to overstep his place. A rat sought the most powerful person in the world to marry his beloved daughter. He first tried the sun, but the sun refused the match, saying, The clouds are more powerful than I. They can keep me from shining, said the clouds. We are blown by the wind, said the wind. The mountain does not bend before me, said the mountain. I can be split by a growing tree, growled the tree. How dare you ask me to marry your daughter? You rats make our lives miserable. You gnaw on our roots, the father cried. So we rats are the most powerful in the world and he married his daughter to a fine young rat, which was what she wanted in the first place. All rodents have vicious teeth. Never try to pick up a wild rat. For that matter, don't squeeze or tease a tame one. My brother's pet mouse latched onto my finger once and I thought I'd never get it off. Rats can live almost anywhere and will do anything to travel to new places. To make life better for humans, rats have donated more than just time to medical research. The Rat Patrol. Snakes, frogs, and owls keep the rat population down. Rats are clean little animals. It's the fleas they carry that transmit disease. Many rodents have similar tracks, but the rat leaves a sweaty trail. Why do rodents constantly gnaw and chew? They have a very good reason. A female rodent may spend her entire life having and raising babies, as many as 70 per year. Rats are as much at home in the city as they are in the wild. Inside the walls of houses or in sewers under the streets, rats live easily with humans. According to a story from Iran, one day the father of a young cockroach said, I can no longer support you. You must find a husband. So Mistress Cockroach put on an onion skin dress and an eggplant skin cloak, sprinkled her head with gold dust, and slipped on a pair of almond shell shoes. She was so beautiful that many fell in love with her, but she married a kind and wealthy mouse. All was well until one day the mouse fell into the cook's kettle while fetching soup for his wife, and he drowned. Poor Mistress Cockroach realized then what mattered most was her husband's love, not her fine clothes or jewels. From now on, she said, I will have no pretensions. I will dress like the cockroach I am, which is why cockroaches now go about only in brown or black. That was actually quite an interesting tale, I have to admit. A cockroach may look like a beetle, but it's not. It doesn't have a beetle's hard wing cases.
Cockroaches are an important source of food for many birds, reptiles, and other insects. A cockroach is an insect, but is an ant? What about a spider? Exoskeleton. Cockroaches were around before dinosaurs, but they're not the only old-timers. Many insects have antennae on their heads to help them locate food and other animals. A cave full of dung, cockroach heaven. Roaches can be helpful too. They eat garbage. Unsanitary. Adaptable. Cockroaches have been on the cleanup crew for millions of years. They'll eat anything that doesn't crawl away, from garbage to the neighbor's offspring. Trying to get rid of cockroaches? Store all your food in sealed containers. Or do what I do and keep a big lizard around to eat the darn things. From India comes a tale of an elephant and a clever rabbit. In a time of drought, a herd of elephants discovered a pool whose banks were home to many rabbits. Often the poor rabbits were crushed by the elephant's feet as they waded into the water. Finally, a wise old rabbit approached the elephant king and said, This pool belongs to the moon, and we are its guardians. You must leave. The elephant laughed. Prove it, he said. The rabbit said, look into the pool. And behold, there was the moon floating in the water, and further it bore the mark of a rabbit. For in India it is said that there was a rabbit in the moon rather than a man in the moon. The elephants apologized and left. Another Indian story tells of an unjust lion king and a rabbit who wanted to get rid of him. Lord, said the rabbit to the lion, I have seen another mighty lion, and he demands that you prove your superiority. Take me to this creature, growled the lion, and the rabbit led him to a well. Look down, said the rabbit, for there is your adversary. The lion, looking into the water, saw another lion, and sprang upon him with a roar. <laughs> But it was only the Lion King's reflection, and he drowned in the well. From Tibet comes a tale of a tiger who was convinced by jackals that they are fiercer than he. Come now, says a baboon, you are stronger than a jackal. Let us return to them and I'll show you. The tiger is so frightened that he ties his tail to the baboons, the way you and I might hold hands. And when the jackals tell the tiger they'll eat him and the baboon, he runs away so fast that he pulls off the baboon's tail. That is why baboons have no tails today. A Japanese story tells of another strange partnership. A crab was killed by a monkey who is, as in many Asian tales, an unscrupulous animal. The crab son asked his friends a chestnut, a bee, and a mortar stone to help avenge his father. So the young crab invited the monkey for tea, and the chestnut popped open in the fire and flew into him. As the burn monkey stumbled around, the bee stung him. And as the monkey ran out of the house, the mortar, which was hiding above the door, fell and crushed the monkey. And then the crab son cut off his head with those great claws. Crabs are mostly scavengers, so while you're on the beach, keep moving. If you lie still for too long, a crab may think you're dead and come up to take a bite. A male fiddler crab uses his big fiddling claw to protect his territory on the beach. 
It may be called a velvet crab, but it's a fierce hunter. Because of its soft body, the hermit crab has to borrow a discarded shell for protection. The crayfish, related to the crab and the lobster, can live only in clean rivers and lakes. A discarded shell is home to a hermit crab and his guest, the ragworm. Does this crab look like a pie crust to you? Well, it should, because that's how it got its name. The king ragworm breathes through things that look like legs. Some of these worms grow almost a meter long. Crabs. Whatever are these odd beasts up to? They're climbing trees. Practicing weird arm signals on the beach. And dancing with each other in the sand. The monkey fares better in this story, also from Japan. One day, the wife of the Dragon King, who lives under the sea in a coral reef, fell ill. The only thing that could cure her was a monkey's liver. The jellyfish, who was at that time armored like a turtle, went to Monkey Island and offered to show the Dragon Palace to any monkey that would ride upon his back. One monkey accepted, but as they traveled, the jellyfish accidentally revealed that the monkey was wanted for his liver. The clever monkey said, Too bad I left it in a tree. We must return to Monkey Island for it. Of course, the minute they touched dry land, the monkey ran away, and the jellyfish had to return to the Dragon King without the monkey or his liver. The furious king had the jellyfish beaten to a pulp, which accounts for the jellyfish's present state. Lookalikes? The Australian sea wasp is a single jellyfish, the man-o-war, more of a community. Jellyfish even live in the icy Arctic Ocean, but they're not alone. Meet the anemone, a close relative of jellyfish like the Australian sea wasp. Like jellyfish, anemones sting their prey. According to a story from Thailand, in ancient days, the seas were ruled by two sea serpents. They had agreed to share all their food. One day they had an argument over the just division of a porcupine. The fight went on and on until finally the creator dried up the sea and told one of the serpents to go west and the other to go east until they found different seas, which they did. As they crossed the land, their bodies left tracks that filled with water and became rivers. This last story is from Nepal. One day, a cobra was being pursued by a mongoose. She begged many people for help, but it was a poor young farmer that came to rescue her. She said to him, little brother, we've both been scorned, but someday you at least will be honored. She gave him treasure upon treasure, and when the people saw how fine he had become, they asked him to become their ruler. So it is that the farmer was repaid for his kindness to a small and unloved creature. And that, finally, is the point of many of these stories, that every living thing is to be cherished and respected. If you're tired of tales and want to explore on your own, click the contents button below. But if you'd like to hear more, click my button to return to the guide screen and then choose a different path. When you're in cobra country, don't sleepwalk. Oh no, these snakes hunt at night, often around human dwellings. Snakes have to be on guard against birds and other snakes. The cobra, like the Australian frilled lizard, uses a trick to scare away enemies. What do cobras and cane toads have in common? 
venom. People milk venom from some snakes to make anti-venom for counteracting snake bites. A baby snake can be dangerous too. A tiny cobra is just as venomous as an adult. Cobras are rather slow snakes. Speedy animals like large birds and members of the weasel family can often rush in and bite a cobra before it can bite back. Some types of cobras slither around. Once upon a time, there were no computers like the one you're using now. No books, no pens, no paper. There was no way to hold on to history except by remembering it. There was no way to pass history down except by telling it over and over. The Aboriginal people of Australia began doing that 30,000 years ago when they first came to Australia from Asia. Click my button to hear the first part of their story. In that beginning time, the spirit ancestors of the Aboriginal people lived on Earth and they had the characteristics of both animals and people. They dreamed a long dream and in that dreaming, the creatures of the Earth came to be as we know them now. In that time, there was not. In that beginning time, the spirit. In this iso isolated area, some primitive mammals have changed very, very little. In that time, there was not yet death. It was the fault of the first humans that death was led into the world. For the moon came down to the earth and said to them, if you carry my pets across the river, you will rise again to life after you have died, and so live forever. But the humans refused. They were afraid of the moon's pets, which were all deadly snakes. So the moon said, silly humans, now when you die you will stay dead, and I will always send you poisonous snakes to remind you that you disobeyed me. One of those snakes was the mangrove snake. One day he sat complaining to his friend the whip snake. Yeah, I am very poisonous, but I am so slow. The humans are always chasing me, and I must bite them when they catch me. It is quite exhausting. The whip snake, who was very fast, but perfectly harmless, said, Let me have your poison teeth, so the humans won't hate you anymore, and since I am too fast to catch, I won't need to bite them. The mangrove snake agreed, and ever since he's been only poisonous enough to kill his food, and humans don't bother him. Mangrove Do you plan to prowl through mangrove swamps in Indonesia? No? Well, then you're safe from the mangrove snake. At home in the salty mangrove swamp, the tiger and the crocodile and a crabby looking spider. Does it look like a branch, a vine? Better be sure before you grab it. What strange animals you'll find in the mangrove forests of Southeast Asia. Adapt. How can you tell snakes and legless lizards apart? Look for eyelids. Rear fanged snakes, the colubrids, either have very weak venom or none at all. When this frog gets grabbed by a vine snake, the frog puffs up to seem bigger. But a frog should never underestimate what a snake can swallow.
Some people say that it is a snake's fault that death came into the world. The locust used to go into the ground when he died, and then be reborn with a shiny new skin. But one day, a python got jealous and broke the locust's back. So now, only snakes get to change their skin, and when the locust goes into the ground, he must stay there. If not for jealousy, all creatures would be reborn in new, fresh skin. The echidna used to be as smooth as a frog, but he was punished for luring young men to his campfire and eating them, instead of hunting for food like everyone else. The angry tribespeople surrounded the echidna and threw spears until he was stuck full of them. The echidna was great friends with the spider who makes his home underground, so he knocked on the spider's trap door until the spider let him in. But the echidna still has a back full of spears, and to this day he crawls underground when he feels he is in danger. The kangaroo used to run on four legs, but one day he spied on a sacred gathering where humans were dancing. The music got into his blood, and after a while he could not help but get up on his hind legs and join in. The medicine man bewitched the kangaroo so that he'd always hop on his hind legs and initiated him into the tribe so he would forever be the people's brother. One story tells of a great gathering of many tribes, dog and snake and spider and so many more. The dog people were disrespectful and finally the great creator lost patience with them. He told them, since you barked and howled through my sacred rites, you can bark and howl forever, but never again shall you say a word. And they were struck dumb and turned into dingoes. At the gathering, a rat stole a duck to be his bride, and when she laid eggs, her children had the fur of the rat and the beaks and webbed feet of the duck, and they were the first platypuses. The poor mother duck was banished for bearing such strange children and died of a broken heart. But you can see her children's descendants in any creek in Australia today. At the same gathering was a widow who was denied water, and with her dying breath she cursed the tribes. And they all turned into the animals whose names they bore, and remain so today. And so the dream time passed away, and the spirit ancestors moved to a mysterious place. But they left us the earth and its creatures to love and cherish. This is the end of the voyage into dream time. To go where you will, click the contents button below and explore by yourself. If you want to hear more tales, click my button to return to the guide screen and then choose a new path. In the beginning, the sky god owned all the stories that would ever be told. So say the Ashanti people of Ghana in West Africa. But Anansi the spider, who was the most clever of the animals, bought them for a gourd full of hornets, a python, and a leopard. Now as I am a storyteller, I may borrow some stories from Anansi. So click the button and I'll take you on a storyteller's tour of Africa. When the lion roars, he is saying, this is my hunting ground. All over Africa, he is considered the king of beasts. Even the elephant, though he is huge and the lion small, believes this. Click me to hear a story the Kikuwu people of East Africa tell about how the lion came to rule the elephant. One day when Bushbuck comes home, there's someone in his house. Bushbuck does not go in because the voice from inside promises to eat him. Bushbuck, who has no courage, sits down and cries. And then he calls his huge friend Elephant. And the voice promises to eat Elephant, so Elephant calls his friend Lion, whom the voice also promises to eat. Lion has no patience for this, so he roars and throws the door open. What do you think he finds inside the house? A frog. 
nothing but an old frog holding his sides and laughing. Lion thinks this is a good joke, and he tells all the animals how an elephant was scared by a frog. Elephant, as you can imagine, was very much embarrassed. And that's why, even though he's so much bigger than Lion, Elephant thinks Lion is better than he is, because Elephant was scared by a little frog, and Lion was not. So it is that the elephant and lion are not the best of friends, because lion laughed at elephant. <laughs> Hyena and lion also used to be friends, but one day lion fell into hyena's fire and was burned to death. This happened in the dream time of the Khoi Khoi, a group of people who have lived in southern Africa since ancient times. During the day, hyenas are usually seen skulking around a kill, waiting for their turn to eat. But after dark, hyenas turn into skillful hunters. So if you hear a hyena laughing in the dark, eh, 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 don't try to join the party. Ah, the life of a scavenger. Hyenas take any free meat they can get. A lion will steal a hyena's meal if it can. A clan of spotted hyenas lives in a central den. Females rule here. A pack of hyenas would gladly grab one of these. Hyenas look an awful lot like dogs, but they're not even related. Hy hyenas were lo long thought to eat only the kills of other animals. But experts now know that hyenas are skillful and deadly pack hunters. In fact, lions often steal the kills of hyenas. The Umbundu people of Angola tell a story of how dogs came out of the bush to live with humans. One day, Dog's friend Jackal says, Dog, oh dog, go to the village and get fire. Then we can burn the grass and drive out grasshoppers to eat. But when Dog goes into the village, a woman is feeding her child porridge, and she gives Dog the leftovers. Dog says to himself, Why should I live in the bush and eat grasshoppers when I can live with people and eat good food? As you know, he stayed with people to be their friend. These hunting dogs, though, are wild animals and not pets. If you're hiking across the African plains and a bunch of Cape hunting dogs runs up to you, uh, well, they're probably lost. Uh, just direct them to the nearest herd of zebras. Cape hunting dogs need to watch out for these other competitors. In a pack of hunting dogs, everyone greets the leader with respect. When we think of dogs, we don't usually think of these wild animals. Strong, long jaws, sharp pointed teeth, long legs. This is the skeleton of a canine hunter. The savanna can be a dangerous place if you're one of these animals. Cape hunting dogs live in packs. When everyone works together, the dogs can bring down animals much larger than themselves. The Umbundu people also tell a story of how the wild boar and the house pig used to live together in the forest. One day the pig said, let me move to the village where they will feed me. The boar said, don't go. The pig left, and the people killed and ate the pig. And now when pigs squeal, they are saying, boar, you were right. I should have listened. You know that the hippopotamus lives in the water, but the Matabele people in southern Africa say that he used to live in the forest. At that time, he had a beautiful coat of brown fur. How beautiful I am, he'd say. 
Hare grew tired of listening to Hippo and set him on fire. Hippo's ears and tail and beautiful fur got burned off. When he saw his reflection in the water, he was so ashamed that he slid under the surface to hide, and he's been hiding there ever since. Poor Hippo. That was not the only trick that Hare played on him. Hippos spend most of their day sleeping or resting in water. Look for ears and nostrils at the surface before paddling into an area. If you see any, keep your distance. Hippos will charge, and they aren't slowpokes. Hippos usually come out at night to graze, staying. Hare once challenged Hippo to a tug of war, but he tied the other end of the rope to a sleeping rhinoceros. Before this time, Rhino was a fine, friendly fellow. But then Hare treated him so badly. A rhino has poor eyesight, you see. So stay downwind and move slowly and quietly around rhinos. Now, if you don't know which direction is downwind, well, you'd better stay home. Rolling in the mud or dust may keep the mites off, or it may just feel good. Whichever, rhinos love to do it. They don't hunt for pre prey, but rhinos and other African herbivores, like elephants and Cape buffaloes, can still be dangerous. A rhino will challenge another male with a stare. If that doesn't work, its horn can do a lot of damage. White rhinos aren't white. Then where did they get their name? The magnificent rhinoceros horn. It has cost many rhinos their lives. Once rhinos roamed Asia, now they're almost gone. With their thick, thick hides and sharp horns, rhinos may look tough, but they're no match for bullets. These majestic creatures have been nearly wiped out by people who shoot them just for their horns. Before Hare woke Rhino, he poured a handful of ants, the kind that bite, into Rhino's ear. And when Rhino felt those ants, he ran, dragging Hippo with him. And to this day, the ants live in Rhino's ears, which is why Rhino is so bad-tempered. As you may imagine, ants in the ears could make anyone mad. Never let it be said that Anansi himself is above a practical joke. One day, he fell into a river as thick with crocodiles as a termite mound is full of termites. But they did not eat clever Anansi, for he convinced them that he was their grandfather. The crocodiles were so anxious to please their new grandfather that they let him sleep in the nursery with their eggs. Anansi had a delicious night eating all the eggs, and by the time that the crocodiles discovered the poor empty eggshells, Anansi was long gone. It lives in, in Southeast Asia or Northern Australia. It's huge. It's a saltwater crocodile, and it's dangerous. Waterproof skin, high eyes and nose. And now I must leave you. As the Hausa in West Africa say, off with the rat's head. That means, if you don't like the story, don't blame the storyteller. Take it out on the rat. But remember, when you tell stories, you must say that they belong to Anansi, the spider. If you want to know more about animals outside of stories, click the contents button below and go explore on your own. To hear more tales, click my button to return to the guide screen and choose another path. 
So we finished up all the guide tours. What'd you guys think? Which one is your favorite? Let me know. I think every guide is very cool in their own way. I think, um, what was his name? Welcome. Fergus, that's his name, Fergus. I think Fergus is the funniest. He has a very just quick-witted um, humor about him. And then her name I'm was... glad I'm female. Tawny, that's right. Tawny was more realistic and more sarcastic with her way of teaching. And of course, Native American grandma, who we saw, her name is actually, um, well, I, I assume she's Native American. She, maybe she's Indian? Um, I think she might be Indian, actually. So, Safara. Safara is actually just a very wise elder with wonderful stories to share. So it was a lot of fun. But we are going to look through the rest of even though I'm pretty sure we've covered all the animals, um, I'll still click through all the different things and show you what they look like. So let's get to that now. So yes, as you can see, we have pretty much learned about all the different animals uh, here from the tour guides themselves. Giant squids are found only in very deep water. If you're down in a submarine and see one, stay inside. Even if you get out, you won't have a chance to wrestle with the monster. The water pressure will get you first. Okay, I don't think we've seen the squid yet, so I will keep an eye out and click on ones that maybe we've not learned about. For example, this one. I'm pretty sure we didn't come across this one. Squid nurseries can be huge. Fertilizing and laying eggs is a group activity. Fertilize. Who eats the squid? Dolphins, orca whales, sea lions, and humans, among others. Whales eat them, but the giant squid puts up a good fight. Squids change color and pattern in a flash to hide and to talk to other squids. Squids, octopi, and cuttlefish are called cephalopods, which means head-foot animals. Most squids and cuttlefish are small creatures that would attack only tiny fish. But a few giants have been dredged up from the ocean depths.
All forests have trees, but there the similarity ends. The world contains a wide variety of forest environments. A man of war's tentacles can sting long after the creature is dead, so don't touch any part of a man of war that you find on a beach. Clownfish and sea anemones have an unusual relationship. Slimy mucus protects the sea cucumber and the little fish that live with the man of war. It starts off with a single polyp and ends up as a colony. They're closely related, but the jellyfish is a single creature, the man of war an entire colony. One sting, a paralyzed victim. The man of war and relatives like the sea anemone are well armed. A man of war isn't just one creature, but a whole colony. The gas filled balloon keeps the colony afloat, while the stinging tentacles below keep it, keep it fed. From the African savannas to the American plains, there are many different kinds of grassland environments. When I say grassland, I'm talking about wild grasslands where the grass grows tall. Sorry, your lawn doesn't count. Just as the environment affects the animals, the animals also affect the environment. The African savannas are natural treasures. When the food supply gets low, many animals move to greener pastures. Meadows are much richer habitats than you might suppose. This animal was almost wiped out a long time ago. It's a good thing it wasn't, don't you think? Some people think that not, not many animals live in this kind of place. Not true. Like dragonflies, damselflies hunt for insects in meadows. Aria is a grassland bird that's tall enough to look you in the eye. Amazingly, it's the male rhea that digs a nest, hatches the eggs, and cares for the chicks. What makes a place a wetland? Find out. Take a tour of the many different types of wetland environments. To breathe on land, you need lungs. Underwater, you need gills. Everything has its proper place and function in a wetland, even tree roots. Marshes come in two flavors, freshwater and saltwater. You can't imagine what you'll find in a place like the Cypress Swamp.
Wetlands around the world may not always seem friendly to humans, but they're home to all kinds of creatures. If we fill in or drain our marshes and swamps, where would they go? Did you think that water lilies were just for decoration? They're very important protection for some creatures. Male frogs inflate their throat pouches to call for mates. But filling yourself with air can be risky. A fast current might sweep you downstream. If you're bitten or even just scratched by a Komodo dragon, get to a doctor immediately. The bacteria that lives in this giant lizard's mouth could kill an elephant. They res resemble lizards, these amphibians and crocodilians, so you have to guess which one is the real thing. Monitor lizards, like the Komodo dragon, live in trees, in water, on the ground, even underground. The ancestors of the Komodo dragon and the Tuatara lived with the dinosaurs. None of these animals are venomous, but if one bites you, it could make you sick. Komodo dragons are meat eaters. They even prey on each other, so at mealtime, the small ones are very polite. Millions of years ago, the most powerful animals on Earth were not mammals, but giant meat-eating reptiles. Komodo dragons, the largest lizards around today, are living reminders of this ancient past.
You can't help wanting to touch a baby animal, but remember that it's wild and it can't know what's going on in your mind. And more important, its mother is probably nearby. In the animal kingdom, playing together is more than just having fun. What a bunch of boas! When there's traveling to be done, it's nice to get a free ride. When you lay eggs underwater, You've got to know what you're doing. You learn about life while you play, don't you? Well, so do these furry little guys. You were born looking like your parents. That's not the case with all creatures. Taking care of her young is a big thing in an animal mom's life. Sounds a lot like a human mom, doesn't it? Play has a seriousness side. It helps develop substances that wild animals will need as adults. Of course, the babies don't know that. To them, it's just plain fun. If you put together all the shark attacks, all the spider and snake bites, all the bee and wasp and jellyfish things, all the attacks of wild animals on people, 
the total number of people killed by animals still would be only a tiny fraction of the number of wild animals killed by people. I think this planet is big enough for all kinds of creatures, don't you? Everyone can develop bad habits. We've got to help animals stay away from them. Some people think it's cool to kill a precious animal. We need to help them understand what they're doing. Isn't it better to see live wild animals than to have a collection of dead ones? People have been the ones responsible for killing most animals. We need to look at wildlife in a different light. Sometimes friends can visit each other too much. Every time time we pollute or destroy the environment, we're also destroying the habitats of many kinds of wildlife. Better use of our land would help preserve wildlife habitats. Many animals would be a lot better off if we didn't use our cars so much. You wouldn't want people you didn't even know walking into your house, would you? People don't need guns to kill animals. A single oil spill from one of our tanker ships can wipe out life for miles around. We humans often destroy wildlife habitats through ignorance or even by accident.
All animals have relationships with other animals, well, whether they want to or not. Uh, for example, uh, my cat and I are always arguing over who really runs the house. In a fight between hyenas and lions over food or territory, it's usually lions one, hyenas zero. Some animals don't hang out in groups because they have to. They just seem to enjoy it that way. When you live in a group, it's important to know how to communicate. Creatures don't always get together just to hunt. Sometimes they have other things in mind. Pack hunters don't need to plan their attacks. They instinctively know how to approach their prey. When it comes to overcoming prey, there's strength in numbers. The relationship between sharks and remoras can be beneficial for both. Lions are the only cooperative hunters in the feline family. The group effort pays off. By hunting as a team, they can bring down big enough prey to feed a whole pride. Protecting animals means more than just getting people to stop shooting them. We've got to make sure they have places to live and raise their young, and the right prey or plants to eat, too. Wild animals belong in the wild, not in a laboratory. Every animal deserves to be left to live and thrive in its natural habitat. Zoos may be the only hope for some endangered species. Knowledge is the key to finding out how we can help our planet's wildlife survive. What would you do if your neighbor was hurt? Why, well, you'd help him, of course. The same applies to animals. When we pollute our water, we endanger our environment, our wildlife, and ourselves.
These creatures are our friends. We can't let them disappear. The last known thylacine, or Tasmanian wolf, died in captivity in 1933. These animals are gone from the earth forever. We humans wear whatever colors please us, except in times of war, when armies choose colored uniforms so that everyone will know who's on which side, or they wear camouflage to hide out. Every day is a battle in the animal world, so colors often have special meaning there. Now here's a, here's a group of pretty dangerous characters. If you drove a car through a red light, you'd probably get in trouble. Color signals are important in the animal world, too. These two creatures send a pretty clear message to would-be predators. Know the right color coding, and you'll be smarter around these creatures. Don't let pretty colors fool you. They're often signs of danger. In the world of amphibians and reptiles, bright colors usually signal poison. If you spot a beautifully colored animal, just look, don't touch. Some animals seem to exist only to be eaten. Well, if you think about it, uh, that's a pretty important job. Uh, I, I don't think I'll apply for the position, though. Not all creatures that help our planet are pleasant to think about, but they all do their part. What to do if your food for many predators have a lot of babies? Some, guy some guys will eat just about anything. Have you ever known anyone like that? It's quite a, quite a menu in the animal kingdom, a particular part of a plant or animal for everyone's taste. Relationships in the animal world can be very complex. Just look at these creatures, for example. Sometimes different kinds of animals are best buddies and help each other out, like these. A lot of animals, like this one, take something from their world and give something back. That's Some small creatures hang out with bigger ones. Why? To get food, of course. A lot of creatures eat only plants, and their teeth are designed for their diet. The male with the biggest set of horns or antlers is usually the strongest. To prove it, he has to bash heads or wrestle with rival males. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Do you love wild animals? Then don't just sit still. Do something to protect them. Join World Wildlife Fund. Plant trees, recycle, clean up a stream. These creatures need your help. Saving coral reefs is vital for the survival of many kinds of marine plant and animal life. This beautiful beast might be gone very soon without our help. The fate of Indonesia's tropical rainforests means life or death to hundreds of animal species, like the Komodo dragon. If you were endangered, wouldn't you want someone to protect you? They've got an unfortunate reputation, but sharks deserve to be saved too. Without help from the World Wildlife Fund, these animals might completely disappear. We share our planet with so many wonderful creatures. It's up to us to preserve the Earth in all of its beauty and diversity. World Wildlife Fund works to protect the habitats of endangered species around the world. Its members are making a difference every day.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this very in-depth look at Microsoft Dangerous Creatures. I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot from this and I hope you did too. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts, and of course, if you're new, why not subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Remember, you are special and loved, you are never alone, and you're always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until the next video, God bless, I'll see you all later. Bye bye my friends.